Welcome, everyone, to the RPG Goblin, a TTRPG exploration podcast. I can speak. Um, we are a podcast that makes it fun and easy to learn TTRPGs so that you're not intimidated and because there's so many awesome games out there. And on today's episode, we are going to be talking about Shadowrun, specifically Shadowrun 2nd Edition. And I'm really excited about this because I've heard about Shadowrun all over the place. But I'll be honest, I basically have no idea what this game is about. And that is why we have <laughs> Ben here on tonight, uh, who is the GM, of the Pink Faux Hawk um, actual play podcast. And uh, Ben, if you would like to give yourself a more formal introduction and tell everyone, I guess, what you do and where they can find you and all of that cool stuff. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Willow. Hello. And uh, hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm Ben. I am the GM of Pink Faux Hawk. We're an actual play podcast. And we play as was has been mentioned, Shadowrun Second Edition, <laughs> um, the best edition. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I, I've been we've been doing it for now. We have two seasons. Mm -hmm. um, we're extremely lazy, so we only have about twenty three <laughs> episodes up out of two seasons in about a year and a half. But um, it's a fun time. We we really lean into, and I know we'll get into this, but um, Shadowrun was written in like the in like nineteen eighty nine. Mm -hmm. And so second edition was written around 1991 with a lot of those 80s, um, that 80s attitude, mm -hmm. that punk rock from that yeah, time yeah. <laughs> uh, infused in it. And so we really lean into that in our podcast. We make sure like everything is through that lens of like everything needs to feel like it's 80s and over the top action I movie. Love that. And so it's a good time. That is um, a fantastic vibe. I love it. And so where can people find your podcast? You can't escape us. Oh. We are everywhere. <laughs> Uh, we're on, you could, you know, just search Pink Faux Hawk. We're on every podcatcher. I guess they call them those podcast uh, <laughs> ser services. And um, <laughs> we're on all the social things. We're on Twitter and YouTube. And um, and we actually, uh, again, we'll get into this more, but our YouTube channel, we've been doing a, um, a second edition book club. Oh, yeah. I actually I, saw that on um, uh, Spotify when I was looking at your show. I'm like, yeah. oh, this oh, looks yeah. really we, interesting. We did an audio version. Yeah. yeah. We did an audio version, too, because they're, they get kind of long. Mm -hmm. But um, but we have the videos as well up there. So, um, yeah, you can catch us anywhere. Just search Pink Faux Hawk and, uh, and then, you know, obviously minimize any actual Pink Faux Hawks that come up in the images <laughs> and then you'll find us. <laughs> Perfect. We're, we're, we're about third and fourth in line after all the actual pink faux hawks you'll see and then you'll find us yeah you'll find us one way or another yeah i love yeah. that oh right. my gosh that is so good and i think honestly like i want to start off this episode sometimes i'll, I'll do a little bit of like you know uh talking back and forth with the person like you know experience in ttrpgs and stuff like that but i am just mm. so curious of what shadow run is so i want to just start this off of with can you explain what Shadowrun is for me and everyone else listening? Because I am so insanely curious and I've almost been like, this is the moment I've been waiting for like all week. I'm like, oh, all right, nice. let, let's, let's see what this is. Finally. <laughs> I can't wait to let you down. I can't wait to let you down. No, I, I'm really excited that you, I, like I was telling you before we really started here, like you don't know anything about Shadowrun and that mm -hmm. is so perfect. I just, I love that. Like, yes. that, like what a treat to like get a blank canvas to work with here. But um, Absolutely. yes, in a nutshell, Shadowrun is a tabletop game system mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that was written in 1989 and it was sort of fusing cyberpunk. So what you would see in like Blade Runner or any, you know, all of those kinds of uh, the Neuromancer. They took all these influences mm -hmm. from these super seminal cyberpunk, uh, you know, movies and books and uh, media. <laughs> and then they were like, what if like you merged magic with that. So it's almost mm -hmm. like this D&D &D with fantasy races and oh, magic. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um and and that's kind of what uh what it is. It's just sort of this mix of cyberpunk with magic or with fantasy mm -hmm. and set in the future. Oh, um, of course. <laughs> as as you know, as dreamed from the 1989 perspective. So the technology is hilarious like it's all like now we look back and go that's ridiculous mm -hmm. like you know, there's like pocket like watch computers that are massive and all these cool things. But, um, you know, it, 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 the, the thing that really reaches out, I mean, I'll show the book here. For yes, that which is such it, a cool like, cover. I love it. The vibe of it is just so like just that gritty punk feel, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 um, and like, 
low life, high tech is what mm-hmm. they, you know, the cyberpunk sort of mantra of like what it looks like, what it looks like to like really slum in this future world with all this shiny new tech and stuff. And yes. like, who, what, what, let's tell the stories of these people that kind of live in the cracks. Oh, that's um, so cool. And I, yeah. and you know, added magic into that too, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and um, so I learned that recently mm-hmm. um, we've been doing our second edition book club and what's really cool about that. Um, I didn't, I, I kind of posed it on Twitter. I was like, Hey, let's do a book club. We read through this book together or whatever. I love that. And like all these people like flooded in and be like, cool, I bought a book. <laughs> and I was hoping someone else would do it. Like, I was <laughs> like, I would join if someone started one. And then <laughs> everyone was like, What's, when are you going to start it? So I was like, Oh my God, I got a podcast. I can't do this. So then um, I kind of was pushing it off, pushing it off. And then Tom Dowd, who is co-creator of Shadowrun, mm-hmm. He wrote the first edition and the second edition. Oh, that's um, so cool. And all and novels for Shadowrun and source books and all this stuff. Um, he, he friended me on Twitter, which first of all is like I felt like I died and went to heaven. <laughs> but then he was like, I'm in. And he showed his picture of the first print of Shadowrun. Oh, that's so like, cool. I was like, I gotta do this. I yeah. gotta do this now. <laughs> And so through that, we've we he did we've done six uh meetings so far mm-hmm. and we've just gone through different chapters of the book. But what I learned, so sorry, going back again, <laughs> what I learned from him was that they were writing this book in 1989. Mm-hmm. They wanted to make a cyberpunk book. It was mm-hmm. like this this book, uh, I don't know if you know uh William Gibson. He he wrote Neuromancer. There's all these really cool cyberpunk novels that he'd written. Um, and you mentioned Blade Runner earlier, mm-hmm. like these movies and these books that were like, oh, my God, cyberpunk is so cool. Let's yeah. make a cyberpunk TTRPG. Mm-hmm. Um, they got to work. They wrote the whole they wrote out m- the bones of it. Mm-hmm. They were, it was going to be called uh, Technomancer. Oh, fun. Yeah. And then the book Cyberpunk, like the game, the RPG game. Cyberpunk, oh, yeah. It's the market. They they were like, oh, shit, like this, 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 you know, they just beat us like we're mm-hmm. screwed. And then uh, Jordan Weissman, who was sort of the owner of FASA at the time, the company that created Shadowrun, mm-hmm. had like this fever dream. And like he was in Tokyo, he was like in Japan, and he had this like dream of elves on motorcycles, on Harleys. <laughs> and he was like, I got it. Here's our pivot. Let's add magic. I love that. <laughs> and so Shadowrun was born. Like they're like, okay, how do we do this? And they just like merged it to make it different enough to like, mm-hmm. you know, go on shelves at the same time as Cyberpunk. So it's kind of a cool, happy accident of like, yeah. oh my God, your chocolate fell in my peanut butter. Your peanut butter <laughs> fell in my chocolate. Now we got Cyberpunk and fantasy together. It's pretty cool. No, I love that. And especially like, I mean, I feel like any good game comes from like a fever dream. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> so well. Exactly. <laughs> any, any real good session comes yeah. from a fever. <laughs> any D and D session that uh, that is memorable comes from a fever dream. Yeah. Anything within this hobby, it's usually a fever dream. <laughs> yeah. No, I I love that, and even being able to like, all right, you know, we still want to do this. What 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 do we do to make it different? And kind of you know pushing and trying different ideas. Like, yeah, let's let's see what we can do. Also, Richard, um, he crash crash crash. <laughs> He's doing his thing. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I love that a lot, though. Like, because it's so easy to almost have that be like, oh, man, because someone else just came out with a game just like this. Mm-hmm. We, we can't do this at all. And kind of almost giving up at that point, but still pushing forward. Like, what can we do? And coming right. up with that idea, like, put fantasy in it, you know, especially since I feel like in the 80s, a lot of fantasy stuff went crazy as well. Like, you yeah. know, there's a lot of with that why not mix these elements together see what happens absolutely fantastic and so yeah, and I, you had D as like the that was the yeah. mother of all of it then you have the cyberpunk game is like let's slide right in between there <laughs> pretty brilliant no that's a good spot to be in like yeah let's mix D and cyberpunk what could go wrong <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no that's so good and so um so i i i am curious of why specifically Shadowrun second edition out of like how many editions are there and why specifically second edition is the one that you have like obsessed I, with <laughs> I, there, if, so anyone that knows uh even if you just took a peek into like the Shadowrun subreddit you would you would walk out of there like shell shock like oh my god because the edition wars are are real and they're oh, very I'm sure. um and and basically a like, super brief rundown is that um every edition 
sort of got a little more kind of like D&D where, it, you know, obviously they clarified rules, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they added new rules, they did things to um, sort of help help the game grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so there are, so to answer your question, I'm sorry, I was about to go off on a big, long thing. <laughs> to answer your question, there are six editions of Shadowrun. Okay. Um, oh, lots and of them. <laughs> there's, there's also an, an alternate rule set with mm-hmm. Shadowrun Anarchy, which was for fifth edition. Okay. And Anarchy was sort of a rules light alternative rule system for for Shadowrun. Because mm-hmm. um, they were kind of reading the writing on the wall that like, I'm sure you've heard Shadowrun's very crunchy. <laughs> like People are afraid to play it. We should mm-hmm. make a lighter rules system for it. Um, which works. And so what's, uh, and then to back up, what's really cool about Shadowrun is that, uh, and we can get into the lore later, I'm trying to say how do I say this. It, it builds on itself. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the lore is like it keeps up with our real time. Oh, actually, that's fun. S- yeah. So so the first edition was set in 2050, mm-hmm. and then the second edition was released three years later, and it was set in 2053. Oh, and so things yeah. progress in real time in the game world. So every edition is set in a different time period or in a future for the d- decade. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. That's kind of cool too. Like you mm-hmm. can kind of the the game kind of evolves like our real world does. That's um, so fun! I love that. Yeah, yeah. And so um, you can but, actually like keep up to date instead of having like chunky computer watch. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Some people that was a real problem for. They were just like, "This is stupid." Like we have mm-hmm. wireless internet and stuff, and I I feel like why am I playing this future game where <laughs> I don't have I, I where still wireless have, internet doesn't exist. yeah where I have a fax machine you know or a, a pager. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense, but very modern. Um, many of us, uh, <laughs> many of us love that about it. Like yeah. that's, that's what's so beautiful about it is it's like, like some, to some of us, cyberpunk is, is very much entwined with that, you know, that eighties mm-hmm. vibe of what the, you know, this future idea of transhumanism, you know, like of, yeah, what of they people thought. merging with technology with what they thought the technology mm-hmm. would become. Anyway, so you asked about why second edition, and that's kind of that's one of the big reasons why mm-hmm. was that like to me that is the heart the heart of Shadowrun, like the third edition, uh, kind of started to take that situation. It was it was written about a decade later mm-hmm. than second edition, and it was kind of um, or maybe it wasn't maybe maybe it's ninety eight. I'm trying to think maybe just six years later, but um, <laughs> lots of years. They to were remember. <laughs> they were already making those changes, like mm-hmm. like we should have wireless. You know, or we should, they were trying, they were starting to make things a little more like we should try to make this as not, not realistic, but, Mm -hmm. you know, closer to what would make sense. We think how computers work and stuff like that. And then fourth edition took that much further and was like, let's, let's really get more simulationist with things. Mm -hmm. Um, And then fifth edition and sixth edition, like kept up with that. Um, When, do you know when sixth edition came out? Just out of curiosity. Uh, so I have not been ke- keeping super current with it. <laughs> Sixth edition came out. I want to say it was like twenty. It was like twenty twenty one or something. Oh, so twenty twenty recent. recently. Maybe maybe it was prior to twenty twenty. I'm not sure, but basically, uh, without I'm not going to put throw any shade. But when Cyberpunk, uh, twenty seventy seven, the PC game was announced and released, and when mm-hmm. that release date was coming, oh, they yeah, also yeah. made cyberpunk red mm-hmm. and so uh shadowrun sixth edition came out at that time to sort of like try to hit that uh, market at the same time i gotcha um so that's sort of i, I don't know exactly the right year that mm-hmm. is but that was when that happened like that is interesting because i i think of it being like an older game you know and obviously yeah. even if like an older game game has many editions like i i just don't think of it as one being that's still like releasing like mm-hmm. in the current day Oh, so it released in 2019, which... So 2019, okay. Feels strange, because I remember when, like, Cyberpunk uh, 2077, or whatever the name of the game is. I've never played it. Um, 2077? Yeah, I remember when that came out, and that's just concerning to me that it's been that long. Um, (laughs) The world ended between then and now, so... (laughs) It is true. I mean, that was a lot of... (laughs) You're fine. Everyone thinks that it's been like two decades since 2019. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Oh, Lord. But yeah, no, that that's so they came out with a new edition kind of riding that train. And so yeah. second edition, because you feel like that's sort of the heart of the game. And there's almost like that, you know, not even familiarity, but like that love for almost the corniness of the technology, like where it yeah. is like, you know, 
what they thought um is like is there anything rules wise that makes you choose that over the others or is are they pretty similar overall Willow, I, feel, I get the feeling you've done this before because uh, you're nailing. So, so there's it's too the I love I put it steep on my fingers for this because yes. I feel like, you know, it is a two. The reason is twofold uh-huh. there. It's definitely that like there's that's the home. That's like that feels like home with mm-hmm. Shadowrun to me because I grew up playing the Genesis game. And this mm-hmm. in the second edition was live when that game came out. And that's mm-hmm. just sort of the feel of Shadowrun that I remember was Shadowrun. Yeah. Right? Um, but the rules, and I have a vi- I have a twenty minute version of what I'm going to say on YouTube if anyone w- cares to see. But the rules, what sort of happened in a nutshell, is that, like I said, they started to try to get more uh, realistic, to for lack of a better word, mm-hmm. as they progressed with additions and stuff. What really was happening was, you know, these players that were really into Shadowrun uh, were really excited about Shadowrun. Of course, they loved it. Mm-hmm. They were like, "This is amazing." What about this? 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 Right? Like, like, mm-hmm. okay. Um, you know, there's no, I'm trying to think of like, like, what do I do with mages once they've played a long time? Is there a mm-hmm. way to like grow them and expand how they, you know, their abilities yeah. and stuff like that. And so they would release these, these uh, source books that like expanded on those rules for oh, magic, yeah, I love that. And for rigors or whatever, right? Like every game kind of does that. Mm-hmm. Well, what happened was <laughs> with third edition, they took all that stuff from second edition's source books and they mm-hmm. rolled all that into the core. Oh, so now fun. all these sort of super advanced rules and stuff are now like the base game of Shadowrun. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. before in second edition, it was a lot more um, like vague, like just simpler, simpler, mm-hmm. still <laughs> still a little more difficult than like a 5e, mm-hmm. but not so much more difficult, like just really kind of pretty, pretty streamlined. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could add things in from source books. Then yeah. you have third edition that's like, nope, that's the <laughs> core game now. And then guess what? We're going to keep releasing source books to expand it further oh, that you can no, add in. So and then many. fourth edition was like, okay, cool. We're putting that into the core and we're going to change it. But they, they changed a lot more things fundamentally uh-huh. in four, between third and fourth edition. So that's not quite fair. But then fifth edition, kind of the same thing. So it's sort of like these advanced rules and stuff always sort of seem to get like kind of lumped into the next core book. Oh, man. And so <laughs> now, so by the time fifth edition came out, I mean, Shadowrun has this reputation of being like, way too hard for people mm-hmm. to play like doesn't matter how much experience you yeah, have i mean i've heard that yeah plenty yeah. <laughs> and so uh if you if you peek into the subreddit like that's that's a topic all the time mm-hmm. people going i've heard about shadow run i'm afraid to play it <laughs> any tips like what's a good addition mm-hmm. and that was me when i came into this a few years ago um probably more like you know eight or nine years ago now mm-hmm. i was asking around like hey so how, do, how do i play this and people were like don't even try like <laughs> oh, it's no. just you know, take this other rules light game and just mm-hmm. skin it with Shadow Run, and there you go. Like, don't even try it. Mm-hmm. And I was getting really frustrated. I was starting to try that. You know, I was like, okay, what if I try this or whatever? And mm-hmm. then someone told me about Second Edition, and it doesn't make any sense. You know, it doesn't really make sense. Like, I'm going to play an old edition, and it's going to be easier. Because mm-hmm. um, you think of like D and D, where it's gotten easier over time, less crunchy right. and 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 heavy. Yeah, right, and and. Like D&D, and this is something that, like, there's this whole OSR movement now, mm-hmm. right? Where that if you go all the way back to, like, basic D&D, it's actually, you know, uh, with, as, with the exception of the uh, Thaco or <laughs> Thaco or however you call it, um, <laughs> that people trip up on, the rules are actually very simple because mm-hmm. they didn't, there was something about, like, that second edition of Shadowrun where they started to, like, same thing. Let's keep the complexity going because people are hungry for more. Yeah. <laughs> Make it harder for everyone involved. Um, make it harder for everyone. And then <laughs> now, oh my God, it's way too hard. Let's make it easy again. Shadowrun went through the exact same growing pains. Mm-hmm. And um, and I and so anyway, I was like, okay, the only way I'm gonna get to learn this is if I maybe maybe I should check out the second edition. And it I tried learning third edition, I tried learning, I looked at fourth, I looked at anarchy, even mm-hmm. like that that rules light version. Mm-hmm. And it was so much harder for me to comprehend. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, when I cracked open that second edition book, it just felt right. All of everything was like ringing true to me. And I was like, this is so much this is an enjoyable read. Like, yeah. it's just like I'm reading a good novel kind of thing. I love um, that. Yes. As someone who enjoys reading source books, like, yeah. <laughs> like if it can like get you in and be like, man, this is like really good just by reading like the rules and, and, and the story and the stuff that they set up in it. Yeah. Top tier. 
We got to get you a, a second edition Corbin, <laughs> because if you're into that, that the intro to this game is just incredible. It's yes. just like yes. it just sucks you in instantly. Mm-hmm. The lore. And no one argues with that. Everyone is like the lore, the world. Perfect. No notes. <laughs> Rules, I don't know. <laughs> questionable. <And so> I'm, <laughs> questionable. And so then I'm always trying to be like, no, no, come back, come back in time with me to the second edition. And try, I promise you it's it's much easier to learn. So um there's my 45 minute. I'm sure that's all the time we have for tonight. That's my 45 minute answer yeah. to your stupid question. <laughs> that's it. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah, We're good exactly. to go. <laughs> <Phew>. <laughs> no, I, I love that. And I love even even like saying to other people, you know, come back. Like, you know, they're just because it's a new edition doesn't mean it's also the right edition for you. And that doesn't mean yeah. it's going to be the best edition overall, which there's always going to be arguments on whether or not this edition is the best or this edition is the best. Because it all comes down to personal preference. Totally. And if, Absolutely. And if t- second edition is the one that grabs you and is the one that makes sense to you, play that. Like, do it. Yeah, I love totally. it. And I, I do want to say, I, I know that... Um, I was talking with Adam about this and I saw you post it as well on Twitter of the fact that they didn't have scans of the second edition core oh, yeah. book, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's an interesting thing where, so like, um, for whatever reason, second edition was never on, has not been on sale since it was on store shelves. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, drive through RPG has a ton of their second edition source books mm-hmm. and other things. And then also all the other editions are available in PDF form on mm-hmm. drive through first edition. You can even print on demand, which is mm-hmm. awesome. I was always, we were all kind of scratching our heads. Like why is second edition not on there? And out of nowhere, when I, while I was doing the second edition book club with Tom Dowd, they released this second edition, first and second edition mega bundle mm-hmm. on a bundle of holding. And, um, and it had a second edition core rule book PDF in it. We're mm-hmm. like, whoa, okay, so this is going to come to the yeah. drive through RPG soon. This is amazing. <laughs> and, and it never did. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, while we were also talking, Tom Dowd is looking at the PDF and he's like, this is interesting. He's like, this is a third printing of the second edition. And he's like, I don't know why they chose that. There's like still mistakes in it and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, and we've corrected that since. There's like 11 printings. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, wow, that's crazy. I don't know why they chose this one. And, um, and so I'm like, I don't know, you know, <laughs> I, look at my, I look at my book and I've got an 11th printing oh, and it's like kind of yeah. perfect in between, like the uh-huh. pages were perfect. The, the cover was destroyed. But the, <laughs> in, in between was like pristine. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I mean, I would give it to them to scan if, if they need it. Mm-hmm. And we had someone else on the, on the book club that was, he was, uh, I think he was a contractor. He'd written stuff for like fifth edition. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, he was like, I have the email of jason hardy the line developer for shadowrun if you yeah. want it i'm like okay of course and so <laughs> i just emailed him and i i told him that basically i was just like hey we're super excited that about the set the mega bundle we mm-hmm. caught this one thing mm-hmm. um if you want i have this book and you can have it if you want to scan it and put it make it available and he was like and he basically responded like it's not yeah sorry like th- that scan was not great that's we're not going to sell it because mm-hmm. it's not it went in the bundle of holding. That was great, but we don't really feel like it's good enough to sell on yeah. drive through or even, especially not print on demand. Mm-hmm. For sure. And so, yeah, so I got the green light. They gave me an address. I shipped my book That's out. So cool. Um, so we'll see. It was a, that was about a month ago, mm-hmm. and I know these things take time. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully, the revamp of Shadow Run too. <laughs> That would be amazing. I mean, I would print four of those out and have mm-hmm. them just in my room so I could like, <laughs> you know, go to my tabletop store and like play a game with some randoms and yeah. like hand them cool rubrics and stuff like that would just be amazing. <laughs> yeah, you're so. like you're like the 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 person to get everyone to play Shadowrun. Like, all right, you know, come <laughs> yeah, come to yeah. my games. I'll give you a book yeah. so you can take it back and play it for yourself. <laughs> I would love to be that guy. I, I need them to allow me to buy that many books so I can be that guy. <laughs> yeah, give me give me a game store's worth of books. Yeah, let and- me give you more money. That's what I'm trying to do here. Please, I am throwing yeah. it at you. I'm ready. Right, because right. right now it's just going into someone's pocket that sold mm-hmm. it on eBay. Like you're not yeah. getting a dime for this. Like, come on. Yeah, um, let me support you. No, I love that. And that's so cool, too, to even... You know, the fact that there is still community there to 
care and like support this game that is older because it is so easy for them to kind of fall behind and for people not to play them anymore but like you know there are big communities that still play third edition or second edition of even like right. D and stuff like that mm-hmm. so it's really really cool and i just love that and as well of having an actual play podcast with it too like yeah. what's even better to show people yeah this is how the game works <laughs> that that was a big part of it too and like you said like the, the community is is so like passionate about mm-hmm. Shadowrun. i i'd never seen i mean i was one of them mm-hmm. like i was just like i fucking love this game like i grew up loving this game and it became kind of a part of me it was it was how i had heard about cyberpunk in general as a, as a genre mm-hmm. like i'd I'd played Shadowrun as a kid on Genesis. And I was like, what is this game? This is so crazy. <laughs> and so anytime I got into I read Neuromancer, I watched Blade Runner, the movie, mm-hmm. I watched, you know, anything. I always compared it to Shadowrun. Like yeah. it was like, this is kind of <laughs> like Shadowrun. And I was like getting it all backwards, you know. Um, but everybody is like that. Everyone here just like loves Shadowrun, mm-hmm. everyone in this community. And um, and so it was kind of tragic when I was trying to get back into it that everyone was like, yeah, trust me, man. I know. I love this game. It's the, there's nothing like it, mm-hmm. but don't it's play just, it. you're better. <laughs> yeah. Don't play it. You're better off trying something else. And so I started making, um, I started out actually with my, uh, Chris and Dan who are on my podcast. Mm-hmm. They're, they're players in my game. We just started a game during the pandemic. Yeah. And I learned Shadowrun. You know, I went through it. I was like, I got to get my shit together. <laughs> and I learned it. And um, we started playing. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, th- this, I could run, you know, this is, it's like built to be run like an action movie. Yeah. It's, it's it, you can get bogged down if you let yourself mm-hmm. with lots of rulings and stuff. But it's such a dramatic game. Like, it's like, there's so many dice you roll mm-hmm. and everything feels huge. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's very over the top. And I love that. And so, we were having a blast and I was like, I don't really get that sense a lot of the time when I'm listening to most actual plays for Shadowrun. Mm-hmm. It's usually that very like sleek and cool um, sort of like, you know, dark shades and a black trench coat, oh, and, like, yeah, yeah. you know, Matrix <laughs> feel. Mm-hmm. Whereas I mean, that's kind of a confusing reference because that's an action movie, an over the top <laughs> action movie. But <clears throat> the vibe was less like, like, um, I don't know. I, I try to, I'm trying to think of like where my we were playing it much more like a Die Hard, yeah, you know, or a, something you know, a bit more escape from New York, dramatic or, and over the top in a way that's not like <clears throat> you know I'm cool like that kind of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like you said the the a, a bit of the corny was the, yeah word. yeah and corny it's kind of true it's like you know kind of like Predator mm-hmm. or like you know that Aliens or like that the the one liners and yeah. the <laughs> insane action you know Predator high fives and shit like that. Um, and so then we just decided like we're gonna we'll make this a podcast, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and it's been really cool because um, I never played Shadowrun as a kid as at the tabletop game, but mm-hmm. we everyone we we've, we've been hearing from are like, oh my god, like this feels just like when I played as a kid. Oh, I love like, that. It's, yeah, and that was that's been really fun. So it's like it's like helping people like bring back their memories of when they used to play this like that's just like really cool especially since like you know it's so easy with like jobs and stuff like i don't have time for those games and and not even like with new additions when it feels like it's impossible apparently (laughs) to be able to actually get into it it's like oh maybe that's a lost cause and then being able to like look at an actual play and be like that's what it felt like as a kid that's what i played as a kid that's so so cool and actually i would like to get into the actual like game itself and i i i kind of want to start with the system you mentioned that it uses a bunch of d6 is it a dice pool system it is yeah it it uses tons of d6s oh those Um, are a lot (laughs) yeah it's so uh, if you, I don't know how mechanical you want to get into this, but oh, I it's, mean, it's, this is a crunchier game mechanical. Uh, I, I'm I'm like I'm all for mechanics. <laughs> all right. So the way it works and it is very simply is that at least second edition. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's that, what we're talking about. Second edition. Yeah. Everything that applies in this episode, everything that is said in this episode, it is for second edition unless <laughs> said otherwise. <laughs> yes. And the very cool thing is that first, second, and third have the basically the same exact system. Okay. Um, they just get more kind of <laughs> – there's more involved. It gets mm-hmm. more involved. But a ba- in, in a nutshell, it's – I keep saying in a nutshell. But in a nutshell, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's for every – your skills – 
whatever your skill rating is, that's how many D6s you roll. Mm -hmm. uh, a three is average. Six is a almost like Olympian, like perfect specimen. Mm -hmm. per, per, you're, you're, you, are in, you are honed to, to expert level. Um, and then obviously cyberware or magic can kind of tip you over the top. Mm -hmm. Of, of further beyond that like and um so you that's how many d6s you roll like mm -hmm. your skill when you do something you use a skill the d the gm will be like okay you're going to shoot at somebody use mm -hmm. your fire what's your firearm skill i've got a four you're rolling 46s yeah um pretty straightforward very simple yeah <laughs> and and then based on what you're doing you get a target number mm -hmm. um if it's shooting your range, there's a table of, of the range of whatever gun mm -hmm. kind of type of gun you have, whatever that distance is, will give you a target number and you're mm -hmm. trying to hit that target number. And you can modify, this is where things get a little bit crazy, but, <laughs> and especially in later editions, but you modify, that target number can be modified by gear. Mm -hmm. You have a laser sight on your gun, it makes mm -hmm. it a little easier. <laughs> if someone's hiding in cover, it makes it a little harder. Mm -hmm. So that, that target number can scale, but it, the base target number is the distance. Mm -hmm. Um I like and that then, being a table too. Like make it a bit easier. Yeah. Like be yeah. able to scale like that. Yeah, and it's and it's very it's it's like I think it starts at four mm -hmm. in terms of the distance. And you get good at knowing it's almost like D D where you just remember like a dagger is a D4. Yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah. You, you know, you just get to realize what those are. Yeah, it gets ingrained in your brain. <laughs> it gets ingrained. You know, there's like there's pistols, there's rifles, there's whatever. And then mm -hmm. like the specific gun can have different uh benefits to it but mm -hmm. for the most part the, the, the range is what your that's what your target number is and then um and then they have to roll soak so they roll their body versus the power of your weapon mm -hmm. and so there's no damage the damage there's no um health points yeah the way the game works is like you're that this gun by default if he hits if it hits you it gives you this kind of wound either okay. a medium yeah. wound a moderate, or oh, moderate yeah, like wound, or light wound yeah. And so your job when you get if you get hit, you got to stage it down mm -hmm. by, you know, trying to soak it with your body and mm -hmm. roll to see if you can like stage that down to hopefully nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and then depending on how many and sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. But whenever you're going for a target number, that number or higher is a success. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing just a normal skill, if you're like, I'm going to go drive this car and I go, OK, roll me your driving mm -hmm. skill. All you have to do is get one success. Mm -hmm. And roll, so what, what counts as a success? Like what number? So anything, if, if, if the target number is four, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're counting how many you're checking yep, to yep, see yep. how, if you got any fours or higher. Okay, perfect. Um, and if you get more, you'd be just getting a better result, but all mm -hmm. you need is one to succeed, which is just kind of cool. Yeah. You're just, you're just kind of, it's, it moves kind of quick. Cause it's mm -hmm. just like, okay, target number is four. I'm rolling. I got no fours yeah. or look, higher. Yeah. You know? Look and at my pile like, here. <laughs> And with with sec with with first through third edition, what's really cool too is there's exploding dice. Mm -hmm. So your target number, if it gets harder, it can go higher than six. Oh, fun! And if it goes higher than six, you got to roll a six, and then you got oh, you roll that six again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to kids, see if you're hitting that. Kids on Brooms has that, and that's actually something I really loved when I I played it myself. Is like getting being able to like you know, let's say um, they're trying to accomplish something and they need to roll an eight and they're rolling with a D four and they're like, Oh, this is impossible. No, it's not. It's not. All you have to roll is a four <laughs> and it can explode. And then you roll another four and look, you made it. Like, I, I love that kind of mechanic right. and that's so exciting in the moment too. like hoping yeah. for that roll. Like, come the on, adrenaline. let's get it. Yeah. <laughs> you get the whole table cheering when it rolls, you know, it comes up, you know, it's, it is so dramatic that the, yes. that, that the dice pool and the exploding dice. Um, and so that's basically it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you're rolling your skill versus a target number the gm will tell you the target number mm -hmm. and then you're looking for just one success with combat it's a little different yeah. because you're you're kind of staging or, or staging down damage but that's the system yeah um which you know seems pretty easy <laughs> like obviously that's yeah. not all all it is but mm -hmm. i like even just the addition of having a table that you can use for the scaling i think that's great yep. and that's a lot of things i've seen in older editions too where yes. even when they have some of that crunchier stuff they will have actual tables that are like here's how like here's here's how you do it and it's like oh thank you <laughs> like <laughs> right. making my life easier right and with and just like with D, &D you can write that stuff down exactly. on your sheet right yeah. so it's like okay i can write my we will we'll like bracket it the, mm -hmm. the distance range so it'll be like you know 
30 to 60 meters is a four mm-hmm. and then seven, 61 to whatever is a five. <laughs> and so it's, you just kind of jot that stuff down the side and now you got it, mm-hmm. you know? We're good. Um, yeah. But in our game, I kind of keep track of all that anyway. So my players just have to be like, okay, I want to try and do this skill. Mm-hmm. What's my skill? Mm-hmm. I'm going to roll that many D6s and Ben will let me know if yeah. I <laughs> succeeded or not. And so it's very simple to play. I love that. Though I am curious. I mean, obviously you do it in an actual play format. I assume you guys do mostly like theater of the mind type thing, you know, not actual Mm -hmm. tactical maps. Is this a game you want to use tactical maps for? Is that just making it overly complicated and weird? No, you know, it, I think it just like any other game, it's, um, it's really depends on the table. Mm -hmm. Shadowrun, what it, what it, what I love about Shadowrun. <laughs> oh, I'm getting into it now. Yeah, what I let's love go. about Shadowrun is that because um, I haven't really touched on this this whole time, and I don't. Uh, I, I guess I was starting way more basic, but <laughs> the premise is that you are a shadow runner, and mm-hmm. what that is is that you're a criminal. You're yeah. you're these mercenaries paid by whether it's the government or it's the corporations or it's you know whatever factions that that are trying to get something done, but like don't want to get their hands dirty. They'll hire you to do it, mm-hmm. and so. That. Every run, you have a fixer and you've got a, a Johnson was what it's called. The Johnson's mm-hmm. the dude that's paying you. Mm-hmm. So they just call it a Mr. Johnson. And it's, it's this <laughs> anonymous, you don't, you never know their name. And they're just a guy that. that gives you a job. And yeah. then you try to do the job. And so, <clears throat> so this is a long winded answer for, for you. But like the job is like an Ocean's Eleven. It, it always comes off like a like a heist almost. Mm-hmm. And so the, the the big thing about Shadowrun is like, planning your entry figuring mm-hmm. out like doing what they call legwork in this yeah. game is like talking through your contact everyone has contacts when you create your your characters and mm-hmm. like those are huge those are like you're calling up people and seeing if you get maps for this place mm-hmm. or if there's someone that can do a favor for you and like get you a pass to get into this building kind yeah. of thing and and so maps can be so my point is um depending <laughs> on the table they could be like that's super important mm-hmm. because I want to look at a map and go, okay, there's our entry. Yeah, and, and you can like get into the, it where it's like, yeah, like this is the best point of entry, and there's going to be guards here and here and here. Exactly. Oh, I love that. That's so. cool. You can get really into the the specific, like you know, uh, granular mm-hmm. with like how that map's going to go and how we're going to plan this, like an Ocean's Eleven movie, yeah. you know. Um, but then like how I, I play it both ways. Mm-hmm. There are times where a mission I think would be really fun to give them the map and just sit back and go, <laughs> go to town and figure out how you want to get into this place. Yeah. How to distract a group of, um, TTRPG players, give them a map and say, I, I like you right. figure it out. <laughs> right. You want, you want a break as a GM for a day, <laughs> throw the map down and just go, Hmm, every now and then. Yeah. And that's it. Your, your session's over yeah, in plan, two hours. Plan, plan, plan your, your <laughs> entry and, and yeah, no, they, will get so distracted which is actually funny because like as you've been describing some of the stuff with like the injuries like that it's really reminded me like bits and pieces have reminded me of blades in the dark which is that like you know heists you know criminals and all of that and this is almost like you know a cyberpunk a bit more action focused and all of that version of it Totally. I love that. Except Blades in the Dark is like, don't plan because it will be or <laughs> it will <laughs> yeah. be like two hours of just planning between your right. players. That game was definitely inspired by Shadowrun. Oh yeah, I and can see it now. Like I, I never even thought about yeah. it before. And it's and it's got a it's got a um homebrew or it's got a system mm-hmm. that mirrors it's called Runners 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 in the Shadows. Oh really? That is a shadow run version of Blades <laughs> in the Dark. So it all kind of come full, full circle where it's like, you know, there's a lot of people I think that that wanted this is a really good plug for my podcast. You said I'd be doing this throughout and I'm gonna have to do it now. <laughs> but I think um, you know, a lot of people are were like, oh, I, you know, I love Shadowrun, but like who has the time to sit around for four hours mm-hmm. and look at a map and like all this like crunchiness and we're like figuring out all this stuff. And then what they, then, you know, someone was like, I'm going to make a system that doesn't do that. Mm-hmm. That gets that feel of like the oceans 11 heist yeah. movie. But like, I don't want to deal with that. We want to make it simple mm-hmm. and like fun and keep that pace moving. Mm-hmm. So we'll make Blake's in the dark. Right. And then people were telling everyone just play runners in the shadows because it's what you want in Shadowrun mm-hmm. without all that stuff. And I made this podcast because it's kind of like, not exactly. You could do it that way mm-hmm. with the rules as written in second mm-hmm. edition. That's what we do. So yeah. to answer your question, I do, I do use theater of the mind a lot. And what I'll even do, I'll just, I'll put like just mood boards up. Oh, on my I screen. love that. Yes. And I'll just slowly, like I'll use like roll 20. I'll put like a, 
I'll make like a little collage of I've how, how that that's before. T- it's so you know, fun. And then, <laughs> and then just sort of like carve out the fog of war to like reveal more of it. Um, that's so good. Yeah. And so I'll do that sometimes. Some sessions, mm-hmm. there's not a map at all. And it's just like, you just kind of, you know, you're, then you're, you're just using a different part of your brain. It's like, I need yeah. to keep things simple, simple so they can piece it together in their head. Mm-hmm. And then there's other times where I'm like, here's the map, that's figure so out good. how you get in. And um, Shadowrun plays to both of those, which is great. Yeah, that that is fantastic. And that I didn't even, again, I am, this is why I like talking to people about games. I get to now figure out that like Shadowrun and Blades in the Dark are a lot closer than I ever thought they would be. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's, I, 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 had to, I had to have like the Neo brain implant learning moment myself <laughs> years ago where I was just like, what the hell is all this? Um, but it's, yeah, like, it's a what are we looking at here? <laughs> there's yeah, so exactly. many games like, and there's Whoa, I and, know, TTRPGs. Yeah. Once, once you really get into them too, you can start seeing where like, Oh, I can see where they get elements from this game and elements from that game and blah, blah, blah. Like it, it, it just all builds on itself. And that's almost like what you were saying with shadow run. Like it's even built on its own self with like adding right. like supplemental rules. And it's like, Oh, it gets more and more complicated as time goes on because they just keep combining it, which is, still absolutely insane to me that they like do that like <laughs> i know <laughs> like how many well, rules are in that at, book <laughs> when you look at the fan base you kind of get it too mm-hmm. though because it's it's people that especially shadow run at a certain <laughs> point where people that was a badge of honor i know mm-hmm. shadow run mm-hmm. i figured it out i am better than you <laughs> you come in if you want to play this game you got to know i'm mm-hmm. sorry but you got to keep it all straight you want to get get good it was the original get good <laughs> yeah, get good you know and so, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I think a lot of people were turned off by that mm-hmm. or turned away or just like, really, it's gotta be like that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we've been kind of the, uh, well, you've been sort of like letting people in like that have been sort of on the outside. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to play this way, but I felt like I've, I've been told there's no, there's no way to do it. Yeah. And and that's another thing is like, we talked about, you know, third edition where this, that problem started kind of really started to happen the the crunch creep mm-hmm. started to happen <laughs> it wasn't like name. 96 98 i can't remember if it was 96 or 98 when that was released mm-hmm. but from that point on it just kind of built mm-hmm. into a denser denser system and so what what's kind of crazy is you're talking to these old timers right that were like <laughs> i've played since third edition and i can tell you there's there's no easy edition of shadow Rock. oh and it's and, like and they it's just, right they're there just past, <laughs> it's, they're just past it and how do you tell someone that's played for 25 years that they you know that there's <laughs> actually an older one that is simpler <laughs> And, and and like I said, you know, the, a lot of those rules were in source books for mm-hmm. second edition. So a lot of people don't remember either. They played with all those source books. So even some yeah. of them that'll be like second edition was was just as hard. They're kind of not remembering that they added that complexity. Yeah, those themselves. are optional rules too. Like, right. Like right. you didn't have to, but because it's like I want all of the content, like give it right. give it to me, and I want to use it. It's so easy to be like that's the memory. You know, this right. is what it takes right. to run this game. This is what it takes to play. Oh man. Right, exactly. Now that's so strange. Like it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. What an interesting are, are, are phenomenon. Are you regretting this yet? Oh no, I am not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, and, and that's and, uh, uh, to go back to sort of um another the thing I, I love about Shadowrun is the magic system as well. Oh, yeah, for, yeah. To go into mechanics. Is it's it's got a very different magic system than what you are normally accustomed mm-hmm. to with like dnd dnd has like what's kind of more like fancy and magic i feel like mm-hmm. where it's like it's you have spell slots and it's very laid out on how magic works it's uh-huh. very yeah. structured right here, here are the rules here is how it can and cannot be used stuff like that you know right very metagamey mm-hmm. like you know like almost not not immersive in a way you have mm-hmm. spell slots and you mm-hmm. have to like keep a mind that in mind as you play shadowrun is is what I, and it's another thing I love about it is it's like the the lore is so rich and it's not it's not in, it's not um how would I say it it's not it's not rooted in the real world mm-hmm. the real world is rooted into it oh I like that yeah and so it's it's not like one of those things where you know the events you're looking at history and you're plugging Shadowrun into it going mm-hmm. this is why this happened because actually there's magic no no <laughs> it's like what the the story of Shadowrun is that. Um, the Mayan calendar with the world ending in 2012, they were correct. Oh, fun. And yeah. 
the world ends, but not how we think it's going to end. It doesn't just, not everything just stopped. Mm -hmm. This, a new cycle happened with, with the world and magic reawakened. Oh, that's cool. And so it's super cool. And so like people started to get these abilities Mm -hmm. and um, notably in the original or older editions of Shadowrun, it was, they, they focused a lot on like Native Americans in America that, Mm -hmm. that were praying to earth or had like, you know, these they had strong connection to the earth mm-hmm. started hearing answers in their songs and their, and like started oh, getting the actual cool. power. Yeah. And they actually secede from the America and take their land back, which I think is so fucking punk. Oh, and fuck I love yeah. it. They got all their fucking <laughs> land back. They fight the United States military and win. Oh my with God. Yeah. And shit. It's fucking badass. <laughs> and so, um, so, so magic is this thing where it's like, it's very immersed with how, with the Gaia sphere, with mm-hmm. the earth, life, anything with living, any of us living, we all have auras and they yeah. all build together to build almost like, almost like gravity. Yeah. Like they mass creates gravity. Like life creates this magic force. That's and, so cool. And so how mages work in Shadowrun, I fucking love this, <laughs> is that there's not really much, uh, there's not really any range on mm-hmm. spells. Some of them have range, but Line of sight. If I can see it, I can hit it with a spell. <laughs> and I can cast spells as long as I want. There's no oh. limits to how many. There's no mm-hmm. spell slots. I just I just want to cast magic. I just cast it. So they're super powerful. I love it. I love it. They're, the way they're balanced is that instead of limiting their magic, the balance is I'm channeling this magical energy through my body to shoot a fireball at mm-hmm. you. That I have to roll to see if that hurts me. Oh. Or if that puts me to knocks me out or yeah. something. I got to roll drain on my magic. And so it's Ooh. this sort of like mm-hmm. you're kind of gambling every time you cast magic to see how you if whether you screwed yourself or not. And yeah. so it's really cool. I like that. And that's uh, that's a good way for it to be almost like a resource, but not one that you have to keep track of, but more so something that may or I guess will eventually happen. Like you may not roll high enough totally. to be able to succeed on that and you get drained. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah, direction. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not like uh, resource management yeah. in the sense of like, of how D and D is mm-hmm. where it's like, I got to keep track of my spell slots. Mm-hmm. Oh, I cast this level spell that actually counts for this kind of this many. And of it this can make people even slots. scared to use those spells too. Cause it's like, I'm going to run out versus like you right. can just be casting. And yeah, there's still that looming threat that something may happen, but right. it's not going to happen if you don't cast the spells and like you have to cast the spells, you play a mage because you want to cast the spells. So you right. use them and you don't have to feel bad of, Oh, I used a, I used my first level slot now and I'm not going to have it for later. And then we're not going to be right. able to succeed. And then you don't <laughs> use the spells at all. And it's like, why am I playing a wizard? <laughs> right. I'm throwing slingshot as a wizard because yeah. I don't want to use or my spells. Or using cantrips yet. where it's like, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shouldn't you be using the actual magic that you have? And there's nothing wrong with using cantrips or, or a different weapon no. or anything like that if you want to but the reason to play someone with magic is to use the magic so i like yeah. that a lot that's really you cool see in fifth edition or, or i think it was a fourth when they invented the cantrip i want to say or i, I can't remember which oh, edition dnd i'm not sure but where they invented the cantrip <laughs> you can see where their head was at though mm-hmm. where it's like we want people to be using magic more so let's give them a freebie that they can just use mm-hmm. And and it's a very limited magic, yep. but it's something they can, you know, magic missile or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, magic missile isn't even a cantrip. <laughs> it would it's be not? A, no, I thought it was. It would be a perfect oh, cantrip, actually. I haven't played d d in a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's a first level but, spell. You have to use a spell oh, wow. slot on that, which is like fine. But yeah, that would actually make a really good cantrip. That would. Yeah. Petition. You might have to tweak the, <laughs> the automatic hit thing yeah. maybe a little bit. Or but, you can just but... lessen the amount of bolts or like you That's could, true. there's, there's ways that you could do it. I think that would, that That's would true. actually be fun. Play D and D where you can like play D and D with the rules of you can cast anything, but have a different, like, but Jen, just play yeah. a different game. Like, honestly, at that point, right. if you're putting that let's, much work into it. <laughs> yeah. Let's make D&D where you can cast as much magic as you want, but it might knock you out or hurt you. Yeah. And it's like, why don't you play Shadowrun? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you just play Shadowrun? Exactly. Uh, but that's what's uh, that to me is also like, that's one of my favorite things about Shadowrun mm-hmm. is the magic system for that same reason. If I can see it, if, if it's if it's a if the same light that's hitting my target is hitting my retina, 
I can hit it with a spell. That's so cool. And so that even so like feels hit you threatening. A, like. <laughs> yeah, it's terrifying. And so there's this phrase in Shadowrun, like geek the mage, which mm-hmm. is a very 80s awesome lingo. <laughs> but like, geek the mage, like kill him first mm-hmm. because he's fucking God. Yeah. Like he will destroy us. And and so Shadowrun 2, especially second edition, the whole, the the thing that's really important in combat is speed. Like you need to be fast. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to get initiative faster than everybody else. And you can actually take, in second edition rules, take multiple turns before anybody else moves. Oh, if you're fast fun. Enough. And so you get your street samurais who are these kind of super wired reflexes people mm-hmm. that are like anime. Like they can move yeah. and cut people <laughs> down before anyone else draws their gun kind of thing. Um, and so the mage, it's like you want to take him up before it comes to his turn because mm-hmm. once it comes to his turn, like hell breaks loose. Yeah, everyone's wiped and, out. Uh, <laughs> right, Everything right. changes. And maybe even himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I'm it's going awesome. down, you're going down with me. <laughs> right. And, and so it's a super lethal system for mm-hmm. that reason. Everything is meant to be super OP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the only thing that checks the, the, the checks and balances are that like this guy's also OP. Yeah. And then, you know, and also this mage might kill himself. Mm-hmm. So that's how that gets checked. You know, that's the balance to that. And and so what kind of happens with Shadow, which I love, is it makes you think twice mm-hmm. before initiating combat yeah so it really forces that game loop of like let's really think out this situation let's talk to these guys or let's Mm -hmm. maybe before we run down that alley and fuck these guys up let's see if there's an escape on the other Mm -hmm. side or you know what i mean like find a way to like put everything stack everything in our favor you don't want to let them have any advantage over you before we initiate this thing Mm -hmm. and it just creates a much different game experience i think than D &D, where it's like there's a room full of skeletons skeletons walk in there and bust them yeah <laughs> Let, um, let's go find some skeletons today which i right. like i keep hearing that where a lot of older editions do seem to have like you know you get into combat at your own risk like there's a yeah. lot of like older games like that and i think even older D was like that too you know you mm-hmm. probably didn't want to go directly into a combat situation because you don't know what you're going up against you can die right. like there's there's nothing to save you there's magic but like even <laughs> even in <laughs> Even in some of the right. older editions, some of the magic was more limiting. I know there's people. <laughs> That's amazing. That's the tagline. That's the tagline. Yeah, nothing there's nothing to save, to save you. you. That's what they're telling us before we buy fucking walls full of books. There's nothing to save you once you start playing this game. Exactly. <laughs> you are screwed the moment you crack that book. Yeah. Sorry, you had a point. Yeah. I destroyed it. No, you're good. <laughs> no, I, I know even with like some of the um, older editions, they even don't have as much healing and ways mm-hmm. to heal and ways to revive and things like that. Like it was a lot more permanent and like that was what yeah. you expected. And I think that's been what's really interesting with like, I would say like the free league boom, like free leagues getting super popular. Love free league myself. But like it almost feels like they're taking those aspects of some of these older games, making totally. them daily making them deadly making them like you know get into combat at your own risk and Mm -hmm. that's just really fascinating and it's it's i mean this isn't i find like some older people tend to like the free league games because i think that's what they're used to with some of the games they used to play in the past because it's like yeah i want those that those gritty games that are kind of deadly and that like i feel like i'm going to die if i go into a combat situation even if i stack it against or stack it for myself like (laughs) Right. It's I, I love that. And and it's cool because Free League, you can, you know, they've like um uh Dragon Bane mm-hmm. and um and these uh, these games they're actually they're old RPGs. Yeah, I didn't know it exactly. either. But like yeah. I didn't know, but they are okay, it's it's kind of cool cuz it's like okay, you didn't know anything about it. You mm-hmm. it's introduced to you as like a new game. Yeah. And now you're getting into this and what you don't realize is that you're actually really falling in love with mm-hmm. these kind of older mechanics, how things used to work, but they're polished and they're modernized yeah. in a way that's easier to understand and um and dun- i'm a big fan of dungeon crawl classics which mm-hmm. did the same thing they they're playing a very old school basic D almost mm-hmm. but with 5e terminology and things yeah. that are easier for us to understand that have played tabletop games yeah almost before, simplify you know? it and streamline it and make it yeah more understandable because some of these older games it feels like there is a lot there <laughs> like there's a lot there to unpack and so it's like I yeah. don't want to go. Th- I, I don't want to go through all that because you know it's going to be difficult. Okay, let's play an old. Ga- I mean, literally the OSR stuff. Let's play an old game, right. but new. <laughs> you know, let's right. let's. See. It's so hard to to know where to start. Mm-hmm. 
on about anything. Yeah. You know, like and, and Shadow is the same way where it's just like it's like a, it's like an old show on Netflix, right? I want to watch Star Trek. Yeah. You know, and then it's like, well, that's a there's a lot of Star Trek. Like, where do you want to start? Do you mm-hmm. like this kind of movie? Do you like this mm-hmm. kind of storyline? Like, there's this show, there's this. And so it's like it is a very daunting task. And so what I love about it is it's like, you know, you get something like um this free league come along and they almost make like the new star trek movie yeah. something that it's you know if it is kind of maybe a bad example because i think trekkies kind of hate the, some of the star trek movies but <laughs> we don't worry about but that. it's <laughs> yeah we won't worry about that but it's like it's repackaging this yeah. thing this sleek new package that um is just sort of introducing it in a way that like like you said like gets the older fans excited again mm-hmm. like oh fuck yeah this is this is what i miss yeah and then new fans going this is different yeah like this is i've never seen this before this is hmm. fun like yeah let's, why have they never done this before yeah. yeah i mean i'll say like dragon bane was so much fun and it was so genuinely terrifying like when we got yeah. into that room with that minotaur and i'm like oh we're all gonna die <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> this that's is what made me moment. so excited <laughs> with dungeon crawl classics same deal it mm-hmm. was like Going back to a time like what you see on like Stranger Things or mm-hmm. E.T. when they're yeah. playing, you know, the D&D game from back then that like they're afraid of skeletons. Mm-hmm. Like who the fuck is afraid of skeletons now in, in 5e? Like, yeah. OK, I know how many fucking hit points it is. It's easy. Yeah, I'll use my bludgeoning weapon. It's just a yeah. stack of bones. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right. Bl- bludgeoning weapons, everybody. All right. We're doing this. Like no one. It, not to say again, like I'm shitting on D&D, but like. You know, obviously you can run it and, mm-hmm. and introduce that terror and yep. it's all, all in the way you'd present it. But um, but it's that deadliness, like you said, it's that like this thing could fucking kill you. Mm-hmm. There's like one uh, one thug on the street could <laughs> kill you in D&D, um, old D&D um, and those old games. And so I, I totally agree. Yeah, it's so and it's. So very interesting. And so back on topic Punishing. of Shadowrun. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Looks like a 400 foot U-turn. <laughs> Woo, yeah. I mean, it's still the same vein. It's fine. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, just so cool. This is great. Um, but so I kind of want to get a bit into the way that like characters work and like even some of the character creation, because I know that we've mentioned like the magic and the mages and things like mm-hmm. that. Um how does character creation work like what are at least the basic steps of it obviously we don't have to go through and make a character but no. what can people like expect from it i love these questions hello i just love them <laughs> it, oh, this, this is amazing I, oh, I want- i'm so glad It is time for this episode's midpoint break. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you are enjoying this episode about Shadowrun. Uh, Ben was absolutely a joy to have on, and this was just such a fun conversation. And if you're enjoying this episode, please make sure to leave a review for the RPG Goblin. I appreciate anyone and everyone who has left a review for the show already because it just really warms my heart and I appreciate it so much that so thank you. And if you're planning on leaving a review, thank you so much as well because I really appreciate it. And for today's promo, we are going to be featuring Cybertopia, which is an actual play podcast that plays the game Cybertopia. It is run by its creator, Ben Nubon. And I really wanted to share their promo on my podcast today because Ben actually has a goal to hit a thousand listens on the podcast by the end of the year. And he is only, I believe, 80 listens away from hitting this goal, which is absolutely insane. And I'm very proud of him. And so if you want to go and check out a really cool actual play show where they play as really awesome simplified sci-fi game that Ben himself made. So listen to this promo and then go and check out Cybertopia. Link in the description. Have you been looking for a break from the drudgery of the real world? What if the future wasn't so bleak? What if someone was to save us all? How would that look? I must know, does your microwave gun go ding when it's done shooting? Well, you're in luck, because Cybertopia is a rules-like TTRPG actual play that explores just such a reality. We've got this disco ball, which is pretty cool. We've got these two drones flying around in here, uh, dodging in out of the smoke. Check us out on your podcast app of choice, and here are our rolling cast of 16 fantastic players take on weird and wild missions that the corporate overlords need taken care of for totally altruistic and benevolent reasons. Okay, this time it's serious. I would like to turn my uh, hacking hat backwards. How 
does character creation work? Like, what are at least the basic steps of it? Obviously, we don't have to go through and make a character, but no. what can people like expect from it? I love these questions, Willow. I just love them. <laughs> I don't know, this, this is amazing. I, oh, I want, I'm so glad. I, I wish my friends would sit and listen to me yeah. talk like this about Shadowrun. <laughs> my wife is she's the love drains from her eyes when I start to tell her about this shit. Um, I will talk about <laughs> RPGs all freaking day. I swear. That's amazing. <laughs> Um, yeah, so so character creation was as another thing I fucking love about Shadowrun <laughs> is that uh, have later, a compilation later, counter of like every time you say you love Shadowrun <laughs> yeah, exactly. at the top. <laughs> I'm catching a theme here. Uh, there's there are a bunch of there are many ways to create sh- characters. Mm-hmm. Is, the, is the the short answer is that the ori- there's, I'm going to go into the original way, which I really love. Mm-hmm. It's a very different way of creating characters, but it frustrated people who were used to point by oh, okay. character yeah. generation, or was like, yeah, just give me pools of points and I'll just make it. You <laughs> yeah, know, figure I'll, it out. <laughs> yeah, like I want this to feel like they wanted that like more granular control mm-hmm. over exactly how things work. The way Shadowrun character creation works in the in the core is it's called a priority system. Okay. And the way it works is, and what I fucking love about it. (laughs) I love this passion. Like you. (laughs) It's nuts. It's painful. Passion's painful. (laughs) Um, It's, it makes you prioritize um, instantly Mm -hmm. as you go. What's more important to you as your character? So the first thing is there's, there's five priorities, A through E. Mm -hmm. Um, First is your race. You have to choose whether you're human or if you're a metahuman, mm-hmm. if you're elf, you know, troll, orc, um, dwarf. And if you choose, if you're human, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, yeah, but yeah. like if you're human, you, you you put that, that's the first thing you decide. Mm-hmm. If you're human, um, you can, every, all the priorities are available to you. If you're a, a metahuman, you have to fill that, that first slot with your, with your race. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the most important thing. And then the next thing you decide is if you're magic or not, if Mm -hmm. you're magical, if you're magical, you get, you get magic points. Um, if you're not, you're not, you you can't, you can't develop that later in in the game. Um, you can't, you can't multi-class or anything like that. You know, Mm -hmm. you are either magical or you're not a character creation. Um, and the way the priorities work. So once you figured those two things out, the way the priority system works is that, um, you have skills, attributes, and resources. Mm-hmm. Those three things you have to slot into the priorities as to what you want. And for where, where that is in the priorities, you get a, di- a different bucket of points. Mm-hmm. So if you put skills as A, you're going to get the most sk- skill points. Oh, you yeah. get a bucket of like, right? And so if you put it in okay. B, you get a little less skill yeah. points. If you get it in C, you get a little less. And D mm-hmm. is like, why even do it? Yeah. And then E, <laughs> you, you can't really do E. So because that's either going to be filled with like magic or race mm-hmm. or whatever. So um, I guess you can do E. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but it's like it's down to like almost nothing. That's mm-hmm. not important to your character. So you don't get it as many. Yeah. And so what kind of happens here is it starts to make you right, right off the bat start to decide what. And, and you might not even know what you want to be. But yeah. as you answer those first two questions, am I a human or a metahuman? Mm-hmm. That's the first thing I got to decide. Am I magical or am I not? That's the second thing I got to yeah. decide. And now from here on out, what do I want more of? What's do I important want more attribute points to my body, my, my attributes? Mm-hmm. Do I want more skill points? So I want to be more someone that knows how to do more skills or do I want more resources? Because mm-hmm. that resources is like money and, and the resources is also your magic points. Yeah. Um, if you decide to be magical, you get force points to spend on spells mm-hmm. and stuff. So I just love it. Like, like the first time I did it, it was, I'll just I'm gonna warn anybody right now who's listening to this, like, oh my God, I'm gonna go make a character right now. <laughs> it's not fun at first. I promise. It's very hard. At first, you're just like, it's so different. Mm-hmm. And and you have, and, and like kind of like any game, um, you kind of have to keep going back and like reconfiguring points yeah. in places because certain things affect those points yeah. or whatever, right? And especially that, when you like do it for the first time, it's like, you know, maybe you make a mistake where it's like, oh, I meant to, uh, I meant to have like actual resources for magic. And then, oops, I actually, I accidentally put that into like E <laughs> on accident. Like, oh, right. no. Totally. And, and, and another thing that's really cool about Shadowrun is that the gear affects your stats. Mm-hmm. Not all of it, but 
but like cyberware. Yeah. Like that actually affects your stats. When you do something, it actually makes you either you could get dermal plating. Mm -hmm. I mean, that isn't that actually, why you want it for like to actually like, you know, yeah. affect you and, and enhance you, I guess? <laughs> yeah. But then that that reconfigures your 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 rating, right? Mm -hmm. So then now like, oh, maybe I don't want to put as many points into my body. I'll just make up those points with dermal plating. Oh, and yeah, gear. yeah. Right. So, so it's kind, like of, kind of flipping back, back and, and forth. forth yeah. Like, yeah. But it's kind of cool. And 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 then the way the way um, cyberware is balanced is that everyone has essence. Mm -hmm. Your body. Like we talked about your aura. Every mm -hmm. living thing has an aura. Um, you all start with six essence points and every piece of cyberware has a uh, essence rating mm -hmm. and you have to subtract that from your essence oh so when, fun, yeah. when you get stuff you're you're less whole mm -hmm. your bot your your spirit it, there's something missing yeah, now yeah, you, yeah. you took your arm off and got a robot arm <laughs> um the you know that that subtracts from your essence score and you can't have you can't go below zero or zero if you go below zero you're not human anymore mm -hmm. you die your spirit your soul yeah. dies um and so mages that's how you balance mages mm -hmm. they their essence rating directly impacts their magic ability oh. and so you don't have a, i see a lot of mages with a lot of cyberware because they want their strongest magic mm -hmm. so they don't really they don't touch their bodies they keep themselves pretty pure oh, that's cool but what's cool about shadow is there's no classes yeah that's another thing i wanted to say is that it's it's just it's arc they're all archetypes is what mm -hmm. they're called you kind of know these sort of like north stars of where what kind of builds you could make mm -hmm. but the spectrum is wide open on how you could be kind of like a street Sam that has really awesome gear mm -hmm. and cyberware and stuff, but as also has like a little bit of magical ability. Mm -hmm. um, so you could see into astral space for instance, or yeah. you could do um, certain things that would be helpful, mm -hmm. but you can kind of create anything under the sun, which is kind of cool yeah. about Shadowrun. It leaves it open. And I do like the priority list because again, or the priority like character creation because it is like picking your yeah. priorities. Like it, it is exactly that. Like, yeah. what do I want to specialize in? That's what I think sometimes oh, we keep bringing up D&D, &D, but it's fine. Um, with D&D, &D, <laughs> I think it's great to have, you know, the different classes. Like, yeah, you know, if you're playing a barbarian, you're looking at being a... Uh, 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 oh god what is it called when you like take a bunch of hits uh punching bag i guess a tank yeah like a, a tank. tank yes a tank you're, yeah. you're looking to be a tank you're looking to be able to deal some damage but you're mostly going to be a tank like that's what you're looking at when you're when you decide mm -hmm. to play a barbarian but what i think is funny um with sometimes with D, &D classes is the fact that they've created so many subclasses that let you dip into other like specialties <laughs> that it almost yeah. like feels like everyone's playing like variations that are similar to each other because it's like yeah. oh yeah i'm martial and can do magic i'm martial and can do magic or i i'm magic and i can wield weapons like there's sometimes doesn't feel like there's specialties and i like the idea yeah. with like you know the priorities is that you're like okay magic or no like I, like right off the bat right. like making that decision do i want to deal with magic in this game do i not want to deal with magic and then like from there right. what do i prioritize what do what do i want my role in this game to be what do i want to be good at and it's not just like everything it's it's narrowing it down which i think is great niche down exactly <laughs> yeah no it's so totally and and um and that's something you know going that's like the new versus old mm -hmm. way of thinking in a way too where um, and this also affects Shadowrun. And Shadowrun later editions, they tried to um, to balance. The, they kind of followed D and D's lead and, and how D and D was going, where it's like like you're saying, like where everyone gets a chance to kind of do a little bit of everything, or or uh, like for uh, like a good example was like trying to balance a fireball versus a bullet, yeah, right. Where it was like we want these powers to be sort of equal in a way, so you're not going oh like that fireball is like way more powerful <laughs> than this sweet gun i bought yeah it's so and much so cooler in, like all of that yeah and so like in newer editions they, there's a little bit of there's a lot of effort in like kind of balancing those things mm -hmm. kind of like D, D, where it's like you know trying to balance those classes yeah so that no one really outshines anyone else mm -hmm. like they're all kind of at the same level they just do different things yeah the older editions of Shadowrun were like, fuck that, man. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're if you're magic, you know magic. You're doing mm -hmm. crazy magic stuff, but that guy's slow. Mm -hmm. So 
is he great at combat? Probably not compared to somebody that is built for combat. Mm-hmm. And then, then you've got somebody who's really stealthy or, or really great driver, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah. a, like the, the driver. And now that's his time to shine yep. or the hacker. Mm-hmm. And so there's like this very, it's like a paper, rock, scissors type of balance to shadow, older shadow yeah. run where it's like, this will always beat this in this situation. Yeah. And this will always beat this in this situation. They will the always have a moment that they're to, good at something. Yeah. Right. And so there's an effort to round out your team, much like D&D, yeah. but like to <laughs> to let those people, but you really just let those guys shine in those moments mm-hmm. because that's what they're for. Exactly. Which I think is so cool. I love I love when a character is specialized in something. It's like, yes, let's shine. Let's 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 put a spotlight on you. It's one of my favorite things about my Monster of the Week game. I have a um, player who plays as a flake, which is basically like conspiracy theorist. And I will give him moments oh. like, all right, you know, like, yeah, you know, let's dive into what is your character thinking right now? And I will reward theories that he makes up because it's like, yeah, let's get the, like you are you are shining in this moment to like show off how <laughs> crazy of ideas that you can come up with right now. Right. And it's so much fun. And actually I would love to ask, um, do you have, would you like to share some examples of maybe like characters that you've done in the past or actually, I don't know if you've, have you played as a player in any shadow run games or have you only been a GM? I have played as a player, um, in one game. <laughs> before this i'm not like anybody we were usually you know cursed to be forever gms um (laughs) especially shadowrun because there's not many people that want to run it Mm -hmm. and so if i want to play this game i got to run it but i did play um i played third edition prior to my second edition game Mm -hmm. and i had a character that was very classic street sam more of an infiltrator Mm -hmm. um uh, stealthy street sam Mm -hmm. Uh, named Jesse Slim. <laughs> Jesse and, Slim. Um, That's a great name. And he, he was just a, a katana wielding badass <laughs> with um, wired reflexes and and guns that could, you know, with uh, smart gun links, mm-hmm. wires that go through his body oh, so that cool. let him see reticules in his eyes and can shoot better. Like just cool shit like mm-hmm. that. I had ropes that I could that I like uh, I could rappel down buildings and I That's could press so a button cool. and the rope would dissolve into dust oh so my i didn't God. leave any traces um <laughs> super cool like the gear in shadow is just freaking amazing like it's like everything makes you feel like oh god i gotta get that yeah like, i want to use really that cool... <laughs> right that's um, so cool but i've built all kinds of characters mm-hmm. in the hopes of uh <laughs> of playing uh, some of my favorites were like i had um i had a uh a character called swiss mm-hmm. who he didn't have any really great stats mm-hmm. or skills, mm-hmm. but what he had was a ton of money. Well, I, I chose resources really yeah. high. And so he got skill wires, which are basically like um, uh, a chip in a chip jack where he can put knowledge chips in his head. Mm-hmm. And once that's in his head, he knows it. Yeah. And so I just had like these finger compartments in my fingers. I could open up these finger each each of my finger compartments and had different chips for different skills. Oh, that's like you so need to fun. fly this chopper. Swiss is a Swiss Army knife. I'll just flip this thing open oh, and stick I this in my it. head. Yeah. And now I can fly the chopper. Um <laughs> and in a way he almost he almost ran like a like a wizard in mm-hmm. DD. It was like these are his spell slots. Like he has to prepare his spell yeah. list. This are, these are the chips I brought with me. Oh, this is what I can do. That's a really it was fun, fun way to play a character like that. Because that is what sometimes it can feel with like a wizard. You know, I prepare these spell slots. I'm, I'm ready for this occasion. And like that is then what you are stuck with. Like, you know, right. you have to make those careful choices. And that is what you get for this entire uh, scenario, this entire heist, whatever you're going to be doing. Right. And then you have to decide, right. like, is it going to be important to have the the chopper flying <laughs> chip. Yeah, right <laughs> and, and like you said like like, like the heist it's mm-hmm. like you that's that planning stage is for okay so we're gonna try and steal this chopper on the roof mm-hmm. i'll take my chopper skill wire yeah. you know i like now but then okay we showed up and uh you know we alerted the guards and the chopper or whatever we were too late and the mm-hmm. chopper took off mm-hmm. now i got this fucking chopper chick yeah. chip and i <laughs> i wasted it oops but, yeah, everything goes sideways always in oh, Shadowrun. Oh, for That's sure. part of the fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that was another one. And then also what's really fun in Shadowrun is just like the names mm-hmm. because you're leaning into that like cyberpunk kind of mm-hmm. 
that cheesy 80s rad dude yes. kind of vibe at least we do and so i had like a um i had a girl i had a i had a uh she was a she was a razor girl so she had like hand razors mm-hmm. that would shoot out and she so cool. um her name was wednesday adams <laughs> and her her shadow run name was hump day <laughs> I just thought that's a perfect name for a runner. Yeah, like yeah. she doesn't like Wednesday. It's Hump Day, <laughs> so she just it was like, "Hey, Hump Day, let's do this." And she that's shoot so her good. Out. And so uh, we've got characters in my in our game. One of the NPCs' name is like Leah Landline. Mm-hmm. She's a lady, lady Landline. She was a Decker. Um, just playing with that stuff, mm-hmm. like the the eighties mentality of how things work, is just so fun. Yeah, just but, have um, fun with it. <laughs> yeah. I love totally. that. I mean, that's literally you're playing TTRPGs to have fun. Like, just have fun with it. Just, just embrace yeah. the goofs and 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 the the themes of the time and like the themes of the game. Like, I was literally just on a call with uh, Riley from Fantasy and Fantasy and Bow Adventure Co. Uh, oh, fr- uh-huh. fr- oh God, Friend and Foe Adventure Co. I keep thinking fantasy because we're talking about fantasy stuff. Um, I was, that's a tough name to say fast yeah yeah though. friend you, and you foe adventure well. code there we go um yeah. but I was, I was talking with them earlier and we were just talking about how it's like you need to like lean into those tropes you need to lean into those like inspirations for these games because that's what they're inspired by if it's inspired by you know kind of that john wick goofy like even like i shouldn't even say yeah. goofy but over the top like that kind yeah. of theme like lean into it and have fun with it don't try to be like if, if you want to play it serious play it serious but sure if you yeah. want to lean into it and want to even like take advantage of like they made the system for this reason lean into it and have fun with it let's go totally let's do it <laughs> totally it's true it's totally it's so true it's um and it's it's sort of what um Oh man, I just lost my train of thought. I had I was I was you just inspired something, and then I like <laughs> my, my coffee ran out. And now I'm, I'm <laughs> got a fuel up. Now I'm doomed. Now it's all downhill. Oh no! But no, <laughs> no. Um, you were talking about like like the uh, leaning into the tropes mm-hmm. and stuff, and um, and that's sort of what I was worried about when I when I when I was I, I had played Shadowrun, mm-hmm. the Genesis game, and it had this vibe of this very over the top eighties mm-hmm. like you know, just very over the top, Yeah, <laughs> over the top, you know? And, um, and then as I would listen to podcasts or, or watch live plays or, or whatever, even just looking at core rule books from mm-hmm. later editions, it all felt much more cool. Yeah. Sli- sli- polished. Sli- yeah. Polished and like mis- mysterious, you know, <laughs> like whatever. And I was like, that's cool. And that's definitely very shadow run, mm-hmm. but like it does, it's something felt different. Mm-hmm. And so when I was, we were making our podcast, um, you know, I was reading the, when I read second edition, I was like, oh my God, that's, this is, this feels exactly like what I remember. Mm-hmm. Like, this is it. And so when we were making the podcast, I'm like, we're just going to freaking lean into that. Yeah. Like, that's what we're going for. <laughs> and I was a little worried because I, I hadn't seen much else like that mm-hmm. out there. It was mostly that kind of cool, sleek, and that kind of became this, that that's, if you're going to do shadow run, then you guys have to have the digital glitching mm-hmm. and you got to be wearing like dark shades and <laughs> It can be very almost almost over the top in a different way. Yeah, fit fit the look. Um, fit the look. Fit the feels. This is this is shadow run, mm-hmm. and um and so I was worried we were just, we're gonna people be like they're not taking this seriously, and and it's been a really nice surprise to see people that like like you said like a lot of people that's how they play mm-hmm. and they I think a lot of people were kind of missing that yeah. for a while so we feel you fill in that missing piece. Too. I love it. Yeah. Like it's like one of the things I was worried about. Like they're gonna think I'm an idiot <laughs> that plays like a child mm-hmm. is our biggest strike. They're like, this is great. He plays just like I was when I was an idiot twelve year old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, thanks. I'm glad but, you like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm that idiot twelve year old. Um it's it's so that's been really awesome. And it's actually one of the biggest compliments we've ever mm-hmm. we ever get. It's like that just makes me feel like how, how, what an awesome compliment you know like that that's what we all want to tap exactly. into when we play yeah. D. you think you watch stranger things like oh i fit, fuck i wish i'd played in the 80s like mm-hmm. that you know like and played that game and got that that vibe um and so when i hear people tell us like this feels like that uh, and i'm like oh, that's, so, that's awesome. so sweet that's really uh, i love that so much <laughs> it's just yeah 
it just <laughs> warms my heart. It's so it's so cute. I love it. Uh, I do want to cover a little bit though. Um, I want to ask since like a big thing has been like the lore of Shadowrun, and mm-hmm. I'd like to ask how important would you say that is for someone to know before running the game? Wow. Another amazing question. Um, <laughs> so, so that uh, um, again, it's kind of going to depend on who you talk to. Mm-hmm. Um, the Shadowrun is the lore; it directly affects the rules. Yeah, if that makes, it's trying to make how that makes sense. It's it's the 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 lore is rooted in the rules, mm-hmm. which I think is so cool. It's a, it's the inverse of mo- most games. Most games. The rules are the rules, and the lore is like built on top mm-hmm. of that. And Shadowrun, it's very different. All of the rules are are incredibly entwined with how the lore works, mm-hmm. and so everything feels just there's, it's a, you can't, it's a, there's not it, nothing else feels like it. Mm-hmm. It's all so intricately intertwined. So you make me the want lore to read is very important. So bad. <laughs> it's so cool. There's a, the whole the beginning of the book is called um, and so it came to pass, mm-hmm. and it's about the timeline. Everything changes from about, uh, I want to say it's like 2012 and on mm-hmm. when the world ended and the new thing happened. And all of a sudden, you know, people are getting powers. And then out of nowhere, people start giving birth to dwarves and elves mm-hmm. and they think like they're demons. Yeah, like, what a what shocker. The fuck is this? <laughs> and then, uh, and then we kind of get used to that mm-hmm. for a little while. Like that's shocked everybody. And then a few years later, like, you know, now computer technology is getting crazy mm-hmm. and like people are getting cyber implants. So like, okay, we're getting used to like the elves and dwarves things. Well, now goblinization happens mm-hmm. and people just randomly start turning into orcs and trolls. And it's like, everyone's just like, what the fuck is happening? And then this <laughs> game is like, cool, cool, cool. All that happened. And now we're 50 years later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've all dealt with all that. <laughs> and so now you're here and we're, it's just like, it's such a cool, the beginning just tells you how, and how also how corporations got their, um, their extraterritoriality mm-hmm. where they are just like, they now basically own the planet, mm-hmm. <laughs> the mega corpse. And, um, and so what I would say is this, I don't think you have to know. You definitely do. I don't know everything. Mm-hmm. You definitely do not have to know everything to play shadow in terms of the lore, but you're really doing yourself a disservice. If you don't at least read that intro. Yeah. Bec- and they do a good job in that intro. It's just, it's a few, it's like, it's like 10 pages. Mm-hmm. Of just some of the coolest lore. And then there's like a little short story in there that gives you like the vibe and the feel of how it all works. So cool. And by there, you're good to go Mm -hmm. in terms of lore. You don't have (laughs) to keep track of like, you know, this megacorp had this thing happen with this other Mm megacorp. Like that stuff started to get more and more um, specific and much more deep and, and, (laughs) and, you know, as as the additions went on. That's another reason why I like second edition so much. It's kind of still kind of a blank slate in the sense that mm-hmm. like you're going back to where they they just started you off. Yeah, and you can make up your own truths of the world and make up your own stories and things like that too. And that's a real thank you for just <laughs> driving this the source books. What's really cool is that when they would give you source books, they'd give you a little bit more of that lore, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So maybe they give you one on London. Oh, you know, the London actually, book, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, like so. There's a London source book, mm-hmm. and then there's so so Shadowrun. By the, I'm getting ahead of myself. The, the core <laughs> rule book it's set in Seattle, mm-hmm. which is a very random place, but it's <laughs> set in Seattle, and so most people play in Seattle mm-hmm. because that's kind of where the game is focused. I love that because, um, like I said, the Native American nations are formed. Yeah. They seceded from from the United Canadian and American states. Uh, Canada joined up mm-hmm. because like everyone was the mega corpse and everything were taking over. And so what's kind of cool is there's all these sort of Native American nations around Seattle. Mm-hmm. And then there's Seattle, which is a part of the UCAS, the United Committed American States. Mm-hmm. And so there's just this, there's this huge variety of countries and, um, and different terrain mm-hmm. and different ideologies all around Seattle is this little island in That's the middle so of all of it. That's so fun. Yeah. So you've got this like Blade Runner hellscape in Seattle, <laughs> but then you've got... Tier Tangier, which is like an like the elves actually made their own like almost like a, a Rivendell mm-hmm. like like place in their own nation right next to Seattle. So you yeah. got that place you can go to, and you got uh, these other sort of nations that are, that are very different. Yeah, and um, the the source books kind of develop those different areas mm-hmm. more. 
what's really cool about it is that it'll tell you that they, the, the I'm gonna get one here. Yeah. One. <laughs> Go ahead. Grab one. See. Where's my, uh, <laughs> one second. Seattle source book. Okay. This was Ooh, a, sort of a yeah. book that was like, it, it's like, let's get deeper into what this city is mm -hmm. and what is in it. And it, the whole thing is written exactly like a, a city guide. Oh, it's that is ad, so ads cool. For, ads for the different places that are in Seattle. Oh, and it's, I love it's that. It's broken down by neighborhood and yeah. it's broken down by the different areas in Seattle. And there's a big, there's all the maps at the in the back and tell you all about Seattle and the different places you can visit. <laughs> and it's written like a real place. Yeah. Like, you know, um, and then what's so cool about it is you <laughs> mentioned that you get to kind of pick and choose as a GM mm -hmm. what you want to choose. They're all written with that in mind. And so it'll tell Amazing. you this information. Mm -hmm. It'll be like there's this many people in this in this area of Seattle, and this is the pro poverty rate, and mm -hmm. this is this and this and this, and then underneath it they have these things that are like Shadowlands, which is kind of like a like a message board mm -hmm. that are like all the information was actually uploaded to this like Shadowrun database, uh -huh. and these people are commenting on it. That's so. So cool. underneath you have these comments from people that are go, yeah, they say there's this many people, but they're not taking into account the people that live in the sewers underneath mm -hmm. it. That probably three times that many people live in that area. And then someone else says, that's like an old wives tale. Like oh, that's so cool. that. And so you you never know the truth. There's this unre unreliable narrator that's in all the source books that kind of lets you as a GM decide who's right. Yeah. It's almost like and they present so cool. like rumors for you to then decide yes. what, if those are true or not. Oh, right. and you don't even and have so to, to decide point, immediately because you could decide when your players go like, oh, who knows? Yeah. yeah there could be so right. many more people there. You don't know. Let's see. <laughs> exactly. It, it, like they exactly you let the game kind of almost drive mm -hmm. how your story goes. And the lore is for the most part is, a you know, is wide open. Mm -hmm. They hit these really big formative moments in the timeline and the beginning of the core rule book from but from there on. It's kind of anyone's guess mm -hmm. as to how things are going. That's There's cool. information, right? Yeah. Like a dragon runs for president at some point, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> and naturally and it wins. <laughs> <laughs> and it wins. And that is, uh, but what are the things that lead up to that? Mm -hmm. Right. What was the campaign like? Yeah. What, like, you know, there's, there's source book. There's actually adventures that lets you kind of help. Yeah. Playing through the dragon the campaign. campaign. <laughs> so cool. I'm playing the dragon but, game, but not the one that everyone thinks of. <laughs> right. right. Um, and that's another thing. Dragons own like corporations mm -hmm. and shit. It's like their, their hoard of gold is yeah. different now. Right. In the future. I love um, it. Mm -hmm. yeah but but that, that to your point like the lore so to answer your question after all that <laughs> the, the, the lore is not as important mm -hmm. it's just this really beautiful icing like it's it's the cake it's the 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 big the basic lore which is in the first 15 pages of the book mm -hmm. are are so formative to how the game plays and how the feel of the game is mm -hmm. But beyond that, it's it's just icing that you can add how you want. And you really do get a choice in what it is. Yeah. Because the books are kind of laid out in that way that lets you sort of decide, like, who's who's bullshit in this exchange? <laughs> is it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, no, I love so. that. And it's even, even a good way to just give you ideas. Like, you don't even have to follow the lore stuff. You could just read it and be like, okay – what what would be a really cool scenario that I could run my players through that's inspired by maybe like totally. three times the city living in the sewers? You know, that would be really yes. interesting. Like, OK, let's explore that bit and see what would happen there. That would be a really fun way to that would be a really fun thing to center a campaign around. Like, that's a totally fantastic way to get ideas, especially with it all being optional, because I think um there are people that get really intimidated by games where the lore is so important. And unless you mm -hmm. already know it, like I know uh, the uh, One Ring, like, you know, people who are super into Lord of the Rings love that because like they know all the lore and they get, they can get right into it mm -hmm. and all of that. But I know some people when it comes to games like Vampire the Masquerade, where it's super lore heavy and some people mm -hmm. are like, I don't even want to run it because there is so much <laughs> lore you have to consider. <laughs> before yeah, even like I had all it. those worries mm -hmm. i had all those same worries with shadowrun and i wasn't sure i was like i can't tell you exactly when or like you know I, even to this day mm -hmm. right now i'm talking to you i've played <laughs> this game for a year and a half i have an actual play i've talked to the creator of T tom dowd <laughs> i've done all these things 
and I still couldn't tell you exactly what uh, Rinraku sells, mm-hmm. the, the mega corporation. I'm not sure exactly what they're known for. Mm-hmm. I, I know, like, I know what uh, As Technology does. Mm-hmm. I know some of the other ones, but like, I, I don't know all of. I I can look that up. Yeah. Like I know that they're a megacorp. I know that they have a pyramid in downtown Seattle, mm-hmm. for the arcology. <laughs> I know that stuff. But if they go, let's go to the Renraku arcology. I'm like, oh shit. Like, I need to probably yeah. read up on what Renraku is. But like, I don't have to know it exactly to run the game. Yeah. You if know? you need to know it, you'll know it. But right from there, you can know and, that and, it exists. <laughs> Right. And, and to your point, what's so nice about I have all these source books. And the reason why is because they're written so creatively. Mm-hmm. They're the, the Seattle source books, a Seattle source That's book. It's like so a good. city guide. Yeah. And then there's uh there's Shadow Beat. And that that whole thing is about uh media in the in the sixth world, is what oh. it's called. Like what how what what TV programs are on, what what how what is news, what entertainment what, um, sports uh what there's odd, all kinds like, of source of books but like so, so cool. like it is so creative be absolutely creative and have fun within like world building like that's just really really neat i adore totally. that i love it and so most of them are are divorced from the rules in a way mm-hmm. like you can use any of them for like you said i, I like source book i can pick i can point to a page mm-hmm. and i'll see something on it that will that'll speak inspire a, a session yeah. you know i'll be like that's oh shit i didn't know that you know or that's really cool i want to focus on that or and then with the shadow beat it's the same thing it's mm-hmm. like there's um you know there's uh like kind of like hunger games style games that mm-hmm. are happening in the redmond barons which are kind of like the old really run down part of of seattle mm-hmm. in the in in shadow <laughs> um and I've gotten to that trouble too. I went on a job interview once with with this uh, in a job in Seattle, and I don't know anything about Seattle. I just know Shadowrun <laughs> Seattle, and so I was there. Uh, and and she's like, "I live on um, I live on Mercer Island. Mm-hmm. Do you know Mercer Island?" And I'm like, and in my head, I'm like, "It's not Council Island. Mm-hmm. It's it, it, in, in Shadowrun. It's called Council Island. Do not say just say you don't know <laughs> about it." And don't act like you know it, you idiot. You're going to look so stupid <laughs> to this person. And so she kept like talking about all these things I've heard mm-hmm. about. It's like, yeah, it no, so... no, I don't know anything. Um, I've yeah, never, no, what is that? <laughs> I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, actually, I've, right. I've never heard of Seattle until today. So, <laughs> right, there's a space needle there, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm like right next to the Rinraku Ecology, right? She's like, what? <laughs> um, no, so it's uh. Anyway, sorry, but it's it's cool because it's rooted in this real place too, mm-hmm. and that's another thing that my 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 player my players get really into. And Dan specifically, my, one of my players, he plays Tina de Bone Meal. <laughs> She's a nine and a half foot troll bruiser. Love it. Um, who wants to be an actress? Love it. Yes. And <laughs> she so he has a lot of fun with that. Mm-hmm. Like, how do I root? Like, our, it's it's set in our world, but in the future mm-hmm. of our world. <laughs> from an 80s perspective and Uh so he'll play with that a lot you know it's like um what our actors he'll he's he's sylvester stallone's grandkid is like now (laughs) someone he did a community improv theater with or something it's like (laughs) can do that kind of stuff and it's Mm -hmm. it's cool because you're you can play with the real world a bit yeah no that's so fun so goofy i love it so much so freaking interesting (laughs) and i i mean like this has been so 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 good and so i'd like to um as much as i'd love to just entertain more thoughts and and ramble on forever um (laughs) we should probably you know stay a bit on topic because it's we're getting we're about ooh an hour and a half it's fine i warned you oh no it's great i warned you you, i I, I do and i am not disappointed (laughs) at all this is fantastic oh you sure you want to do this (laughs) yes i do Um, i love it (laughs) but um so with with Shadowrun, you mentioned some of the uh, fears that you've had as, had as a GM, you know, with running the game, the fears with like the lore and stuff. Um, right. From your perspective, do you have like any advice you would give people who would like to run Shadowrun and maybe may feel intimidated by the lore or even just the um, community around the game and, and stuff like that? Oh, Yes. 
Um, <laughs> and I th- and that's kind of what I've been trying to do. Uh, use our platform, mm-hmm. if you will, to be pretentious about it. We have a, we, we don't not we don't have a platform. We don't, we're just a little podcast. But um, it what it's been nice is it's been inspiring people to play that that have been afraid to. And and so my advice is that to just do it. Yeah. Like buy second edition or whatever edition. I, I love oh, it. Second, but second edition. But like let's be real. Buy second edition. Um, any edition will work, mm-hmm. right? people there are people that love fourth edition they love the crunch they're really big into crunch they mm-hmm. love fifth edition or and there's some people that don't even love fifth, cr- the crunch but love that there's wireless and stuff mm-hmm. yeah and they love that about it so there's no wrong edition but what used to upset me was that people would act like there is no simpler edition yeah. and i was like there is though yeah and so with second edition that's kind of what you get out of it and what I would, what I, my advice to new people is to, is that it exists. Mm-hmm. That's my first thing. <laughs> it exists. Second edition is, is really very, very simple. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as you let it be. Mm-hmm. And if you go, well, I wish there was a rule for, you know, for, uh, you know, dr- controlling drones from a distance. Mm-hmm. Oh, they exist. You go get the Or you can make up your own. <laughs> yeah. The book is very abstract. Mm-hmm. With, especially with rigor rules. <laughs> rigor is, it's just sort of like, here's the stuff you can buy. Mm-hmm. And then you're kind of like, oh, how do I do this? And there's like one little like paragraph on it. But what I love, someone like me loves that. Mm-hmm. That's total freedom to go, all right, well, I have my little, like how D&D does where it's like, this is the um, the difficulty chart mm-hmm. of, of numbers, right? Yeah. Like difficulty value. Mm-hmm. I guess that's what it's called in, 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 uh, in D&D. Where it's like this number is an average challenge, mm-hmm. and this is a difficult challenge. Um, you just look at those, and that's your Bible. Yeah. <laughs> and you go with like your your rigor is flying drones around with their mind and shit, <laughs> and you're just looking at this thing like how hard is that? Mm-hmm. That's the target number you're going to try to beat. Yeah. Um, so sorry, going back to your story, your, your question, <laughs> uh, away from my story and into your question. Uh, there, my 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 advice is to. Is that second edition exists? The simpler edition <laughs> exists, but to make it simpler for yourself, the the thing that that you really should do is look at the combat section. Mm-hmm. Re- read the beginning of the book. Get you, you're not going to stop yourself yeah. once you've started it. It's <laughs> fucking amazing. Um, don't worry about creating characters right mm-hmm. away. They have archetypes. They have like sample characters in the book. Grab a couple of those. And and roll some sample combat scenarios. Go, grab a buddy or whatever. If you guys just have a second, you can take the sample characters mm-hmm. and you can just go through some combat scenario. Once you have combat down, um, you've got the game. Yeah, it's a very unified system. Everything works the way combat does. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't play as a rigger. Don't play as a mage or a decker at first. Mm-hmm. Just grab some people. Get really into like the cyberpunk vibe of it <laughs> and learn the combat mm-hmm. and how that stuff works and once that's kind of become second nature to you and you're not slowing down a ton to look at how do, what, what do i roll yeah. is it my what is my body once you have that kind of down you've done that kind of fluid now introduce some magic yeah. you know and now you and you realize it's the same exact premise mm-hmm. it's just now we're looking at different values to see how where your target number comes yep. from kind of thing and um and you can put that information kind of on your player a little bit. Like, okay, if you're a mage, I want you to kind of keep track of help me out yeah. and, and, <laughs> Please. and do this a little bit. That's always the bane of our existence, right? Is like, <laughs> know the rules. Um, read the, what is it? Read the fucking manual. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Please read the rules. But- <laughs> like I, I have, I have introduced people to a game by just giving them a reference sheet because I know that they're not going to read the rules. And so I'm like, just at least something, mm-hmm. have at least some mm-hmm. grasp on how some of your facing information works because i'm i'm doing a million things over here <laughs> yeah and, and and that's it, it's really that it's just it's paring it down what's really great about shadow and, and what's cool about it is that there's no classes mm-hmm. and there's no um there's no there's no levels you don't level your character oh yeah so you you just can kind of a, a, a improve your abilities mm-hmm. and stuff and so because of that what's what's nice about D and what makes it easy is that Pretty much if you're starting with a level one character, that's the basic. Yeah. That's start with that. And then it gets more complex as you level up. Mm-hmm. Shadowrun's kind of your your, your character. <laughs> you're gonna always be this. You kind of start with all that front loaded a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
And so what you kind of have to do is like put to put the training wheels on is like, don't allow riggers or deckers or yep. mages at first. Just just start play the game. Simple. Start off simple. That That's my major um, piece of advice. And and also just uh, don't get bogged down either. Like mm -hmm. as long as people are like, fuck, that's cool. You're winning. <laughs> yeah, you did it. <laughs> right. Like, OK, did you get the modifier? Everyone. But that was oh man. That was one of the um, the biggest like kind of boost confidence boosters I ever got mm -hmm. was I I told someone like ah, I played this combat thing but I I got the modifiers wrong I forgot to like you know I forgot to like um, to include like these modifiers yeah. for their damage or for whatever like I I got it a little bit wrong and the guy was like dude I've played this for thirty years I'm always still forgetting modifiers <laughs> and I was like oh and it like it like unlocked yeah. my brain where it's like. That's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, don't try not to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, be a, try to be aware as aware as possible. You're going to miss stuff. And as long as people are laughing and having fun, like, that's the fucking point. Exactly. Yes. You know? It, you're going to make mistakes. It's inevitable. Just, just roll going with to. it. Just have fun. Right. And, and right. even then, I think that, like, if, if you make a mistake in, like, a ruling or whatever and – people have fun with it and you find that hey actually that was more fun than actually running the game the way it was supposed to be you can also totally. just go with that too like you don't have to play it the way that everyone else plays it it is for your table totally. it is for your enjoyment play it the way that you enjoy it right and for that and, and it, it might vary moment to moment mm -hmm. right like um and and that's that kind of how i play shadow run too is like if 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 um especially uh deckers mm -hmm. deckers are the are the hackers in this game okay, yeah they plug in and they can hack go into computer systems into virtual reality so cool and basically ha be well. on this different plane yeah yeah um that gets a lot of grief people there's they have hated <laughs> the decking rules forever mm -hmm. in shadow run and so that was one of my challenges too and i started playing this game i was like i i keep touting that this game is easy mm -hmm. that there's a way to play this and I haven't tackled Matrix yet. I need to tackle Matrix. And so <laughs> in the second season, I I did. Mm -hmm. I, I read it. I read through it. Um, I kind of got an understanding of how it worked. And I kind of figured out my own little way of tweaking it so that yeah. it's, it works for my table. Um, but that's kind of the way I play. If, if, if it doesn't make a difference, if it's not dramatic... Like if it's if if you need to hack, I just want to like hack and see if I can like find anything about this guy, mm -hmm. right? Okay, let's just roll the dice and see yeah. if you did it. We'll make it like one roll. Yeah, we'll see if you did it. But if now we're in this room and I need to hack to open this door, and if I don't open this door, like this poison gas that's coming to this <laughs> vent is going to kill us. Like okay, now we can slow this down, mm -hmm. and every we're going to go through every single thing because we're going to make this moment you know, super dramatic. Yeah, because that's what it like is. Every success matters mm -hmm. in every role. Yeah. And so you take like maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes to go over like 10 seconds of game, mm -hmm. of real game time because every moment matters. I love and, that. Um, and that's kind of how I run Shadowrun, yeah. right? It's like like an action movie. When the when the action slows down and all this shit is happening, that's where Shadowrun really shines too because it's like it allows you to get there. Mm -hmm. It's not like, um games were like well it's just a dice roll mm -hmm. and we see it's like no okay well you know we're, we're gonna roll this and now we're gonna have the this thing roll against that yeah and it's like the drama just and keeps you, kind yeah of and you get to watch it other. unfold really nice. slowly over time and then it's like again it does build up that even tension at the table like we are going through every roll and everyone's just going to be at the edge of their seats like okay is this actually going to succeed right. and then like every time they roll right. they roll what they need it's going to be like oh <sighs> Okay, but there's still two more rolls left. <laughs> like, uh, there's so much more to go. Exactly. I love it. And it affects your actions going forward too, mm -hmm. right? It's like, okay, I was going to do this, but oh shit, he's having trouble there. I might help him with that. Mm -hmm. It's such a fun time. Yeah, and um, and that's the key is just like, if it's not going to be fun to watch somebody hack a computer, then don't, don't make it involved. Yeah. Make it a dice roll. Yeah. And move on. Exactly. Right. The book doesn't tell you to do that, <laughs> but do that. Just do that if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. That's what's uh, that's my advice is yeah. um, is make it fun and and you have to play it a bit to know where those areas are to trim a little mm -hmm. bit, but it doesn't take long to find it. Yeah, and um, and a lot of it will just so. be if you like those. And this is where it's it's great to consume media that is like 
in the mm-hmm. same realm as the games that you're playing because you can even prep yourself for what those moments are like you know i watch a bunch of 80s action movies and like get like totally. get it down like okay where are the moments of tension <laughs> yeah. where are the moments that we kind of slow it down a little bit and step and like you know go step by step like absolutely no i right. love that so much that's so fun and you can even do that in any game too you know just make it more checks build up that tension yeah. as long as it's you know and that's where again it matters with your table because some people would be like oh yeah that would be really cool to do and some people would be like no why like we do one role anyway so there is obviously table right table um relationships it varies, yeah, right? like- <laughs> it, 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 yeah it, it's exactly it's it's all subjective mm-hmm. in, a, in a way but what i but what i will say a good selling point about shadow is it, it it has rules to support both ways yeah i love it um and that's kind of cool. Like there, are, there are games that are sim- super sim- like a rules light mm-hmm. game that some crunch per- loving person will will be like, There's, "I'm having no fun with mm-hmm. this," right? And vice versa, a game that's just inc- so incredibly crunchy that someone that doesn't want to deal with all that is just having no fun. Yeah, I, I like, feel uh... like what's really nice about Shadowrun is there's a versatility yep. there. You can kind of you can kind of pare it down. And, and talking to Tom Dowd, um, I learned that that was sort of the point. Mm-hmm. Whether it was worded well enough to let people know that, mm-hmm. because there was an era, an era of like get good, yeah. like sorry, this is what they intended. It's supposed yeah. to be hard, and a certain caliber of person can get it. <laughs> his point was like, no, like I made this game watching action movies. Yeah. I wanted it to feel like a fucking awesome bullet rain, you know, bullet time action <laughs> movie, and so that's why we built it mm-hmm. this way. And that really kind of I felt validated me. Yeah. With the way I was running it away, it's like when those moments slow it down, and here are all the rules to support mm-hmm. that 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 drama build of that moment. But otherwise, just just move, yeah. just keep keep it going. Just do what works, and uh, I love that too. Rules yeah. that support the game and the mechanics that support the game and the stories, and just all the happy brain chemicals. Um, but I think though we are starting <laughs> to get close to the end here, and seriously, this has been so fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I have a end question that I always love to ask, and the the funny thing is I feel like you've answered it a few times throughout the episode, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it one more time just, just for fun. Um, Cause it's so great. Uh, and that is, it, it's a bit of a hard question to answer, but I'd like to see what you say. Um, why do you love shadow run? Why do I love shadow run? Overall, oh, there are all these things that you love about it, but like if you had to, I guess, convince someone with just one thing, why do you love mm-hmm. Shadowrun to get other people to play it, to to show them how much you care for the game? You know, what how do you what do you love about Shadowrun? <laughs> I I love I love how unapologetically just weird and beautiful and punk it is. Mm-hmm. Especially, I'm talking about second edition, yeah. kind of specifically, <laughs> yeah, second but, edition. Um, because that's kind of like I think. Have I made that clear? <laughs> um, but but in general, just Shadowrun is this weird. It's got the it's got these it's got warts on mm-hmm. it. It's not beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's this. It's kind of this weird and um, it's a bit ugly, and like <laughs> asymmetrical. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things. It it doesn't fucking care mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it, it just is what it is it's it, is it balanced no is it <laughs> is it is it uh you know is it fair that this guy goes faster than you in combat no is it fair that mage can literally explode you from inside your body with a fireball <laughs> no but it, it just it's very unapologetic about mm-hmm. that it's like this is the game this is the lore this is how it works and it becomes this very believable world mm-hmm. because of that it's just like this is just how it mm-hmm. is there's no rules balance reason for it that's explained to you. It's just magic works that way. And, and fun little mo- thing that I've learned in the book club is that the guy that wrote the magic system was a practicing mage. He <laughs> believed in magic. And this is, oh, his, really? swear to God, he said, his name was um, Paul Hume. Mm-hmm. And, or is, he's still, he's still around. He uh, would just tell Tom Dad, like, this is how magic works. Uh-huh. And so they were like, "This is gold," That's and so they're just good. running this into the yeah. game. So there's this there's this kind of believability there. But but to again, go, trying to strip it down to your question, <laughs> I just I just love how it's a punch you in the face punk game mm-hmm. 
with cyberpunk wrapped around it um, and then magic infused. So you just get these, this really ugly, <laughs> gritty, uh, just badass game. It's, it's just, it's just so it's an experience. You will see if you yeah. ever play it, it it's like, you, you're going to be like, it doesn't matter how long it takes to get through that session mm-hmm. and get through this rule. If you, whatever you're going to think it's like a movie that makes you think Yeah. when you get out of it, you're like, I've never played a game that made me feel that yeah, way. What was that? <laughs> yeah. Like in D and D I'm, you're a little bit bummed sometimes if you didn't get into combat because mm-hmm. that's kind of what that game is sort of geared for. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of get around. I mean, it that's just the big focus. I mean, that's what everything re- yeah. revolves around. Right. Like shit. I didn't get to, I didn't get to fight anybody yeah. or, or whatever. Um, Shadowrun, it you don't feel that way. It's everything feels lived in and, and real, mm-hmm. and everything is just it's just this feeling of like, you know, you're you're dead. It's like a noir film. Mm-hmm. You're just you're this ugly character that's just scratching out an existence. <laughs> but goddamn, do you really want to be that guy? You really want to be that guy though. Yeah. That's fucking cool. You know. Um, this is like a whole love letter love to like Shadowrun second edition. <laughs> love, and it's so good. I yes. Freaking love Shadowrun. I mean, it's, 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 it was so formative to me um, in terms of uh, it just, it was this weird. I, I'll tell you exactly when I was a kid, I, I played the Genesis game. I literally was like, what the fuck is yeah. this? <laughs> it was, I turned the game on and this huge cow skull comes on the screen. It's got these, this digital cyber circuit board mm-hmm. behind it. And it says Shadowrun, and I'm like, okay, and I hit it, and it's a fantasy game. It's like an RPG, <laughs> but I got guns, and this elf dude is wearing a trench coat and shades, and it doesn't tell you anything. It just gets you into it. You go into it, you're going to a dark corner in a bar, and there's an orc that's giving you a sketchy job mm-hmm. to do. And I just was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, what this? am I getting into right now? <laughs> like- <laughs> right, but I couldn't stop playing. The music was so gritty mm-hmm. and cool. And the vibe was just felt very um, and and to to talk about the Genesis game just a second. Like what I loved about it was like the there was no like lo- leveling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was like if you want to get into this room, like your brother died, mm-hmm. and this is the story of the sh- beginning of the Genesis game. But like your brother died, and his stuff is in this hotel mm-hmm. or his oh, apartment, that's fun. and yeah. the landlord won't let you in until you have this much money to pay this guy's back rent. Mm, that's fun, and so. You're leveling as you're trying to make the money to pay for this thing, but it never breaks that immersion. Yeah. It's never like, sorry, you have to be level eight to get to the store. It's like, no, you need to have this money. And and so yes. when you play Shadowrun, the RPG, it's it all makes sense that way. Mm-hmm. It just feels this very much like it, it just makes sense. It's like, oh, well, of course. Yeah. I need the money. You know, like of course, of course, I, 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 I don't want to cast a level twelve fireball because that could knock me out. Yeah, put me to sleep. Put anybody to sleep. <laughs> so it just, it's this very um, real lived in world that just is weird yeah. and uh, it doesn't give a shit. And I love that. I love. That. I love it, man. I really want to <laughs> read this. I really want to play it. And good lord. I hope that other Please people do reach too. Out, let me know yeah. if you do. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if I want to hear everybody, I big folk on Twitter, <laughs> message me. I want a picture of your book. I just want to know. I, I just, I love the idea of people getting into shot. It's one of my favorite things mm-hmm. is seeing people that are like their eyes when they, when they discover yeah. it and they learn like what, oh my God, what is this? This is amazing. <laughs> you know? It's it's great. It's so good. So yeah, everyone, I mean, I think this is just a formal invitation. If you want to talk about Shadowrun, second edition. Um, <laughs> In princes, but not really, but kind of, but not really. Yeah. Um, go over to Pink Hawk. <laughs> talk with Ben. Show, show him your books. <laughs> Be like, yeah, you know, I love this game just as much. Start a conversation. Get into it. Because like, I think that's the best thing about these is like the community that can build up over the love of a single game. Like yeah. I love this what game cool so time. much. I know, right? I mean, that's what that's what the coolest thing about this podcast is. I get to talk to people about games that they love. What other way is like that's like the yeah. best time to spend my time from all over the world. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's- well, we have in our Discord, we have people from, you know, Australia. Mm-hmm. We have people in, you know, England and it's like and it's a shared that's- experience. 
I love it. Yeah. And and everyone's, we have like a shelfies room and people send their shelves of all their books and stuff. It. And it's just like, it's like, damn, it's cool to nerd mm-hmm. out with, with like-minded people. It is. So yeah, our invitation is open. Yes. My DMs are open, <laughs> and, but like, keep it, let's, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it let's try to keep it pg yeah. but like you know whatever i'll, I'll if we're talking shadow and i'll deal with it if we, if we get beyond that i think that's a great place to end this episode of <laughs> willow thank you so much for having this was a lot of fun yes. and i really do love your your podcast i feel like you're doing a really like what I want to do for Shadowrun mm-hmm. is what you're doing for just RPGs in general for people and uh, like making you. it a less daunting yeah. experience. And I think that's needed mm-hmm. and necessary and more relevant than ever. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and you're great at it. Oh, thank so you. So thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, and I mean, if there is any a time that you are like, hey, I really love this other game, let me know because I am more than happy to have you back on the show because this was oh, God. fantastic. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, all right. no, just let me know. And as, as long as we haven't covered it before and even if we have covered it, maybe in the future we'll do another episode on it. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. Totally. But yeah, no, let me know. And and seriously, thank you so much. And this, this has been awesome. And I guess our kind of final moments here um again let everyone know where they can go check out your show and where they can find you and all of that stuff because they need to go listen to pink full hawk right now and hear about shadow run <laughs> because if you just listen to this why wouldn't you like just right. do it please <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a requirement yeah. it, please do not think i am shot I, I have any spokesman for shadow run if you don't like me and hate me still check out shadow run <laughs> yeah. it's um, but if I did not annoy you, <laughs> pl- check out our podcast. Uh, we're Pink Faux Hawk. We play second edition, as we said, and we've actually were nominated for an Emmy in 2022. Yeah. We won an Audioverse Award I in 20- 2022. So, like, I'm not saying that. They said that. They <laughs> they are saying we're good. Um, and they're the but, yeah, You can check so. us out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they could, you could, we did not win in any. We did not. Win it. We didn't have enough fans to win in any, but we got nominated, and that was really great. No, but um, yeah, check us out. We are Pink Faux Hawk. We um, and we we release episodes every two weeks. We're our second season. It's a very small back catalog mm-hmm. to catch up and <laughs> and be up to date. Uh, that's my that's my way of like making the lazy thing a positive. There's not that many episodes. You yeah, can catch right absolutely. up. Absolutely. <laughs> And uh, and our social, we're all, everywhere on social media too. So we would love to hear from you, uh, new fans and old fans of Shatter on the Light. Yeah. And all of those links, of course, will be in the description of this episode too. So that, you know, ease of ease of checking out Shadow Run and Pink Faux Hawk and all of that cool stuff because it is required now. I'm, I'm saying it now. It is required. You listen to this episode. You got to this point. Go check out Pink Faux Hawk and Shadow Run and go get the game. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate I appreciate bullying our yeah. listeners into that. But thank you. I didn't want to do it, yeah, but I mean, that's great. That's what the show is. We're bullying you to play other games. Go do it. Uh, but yeah, no. <laughs> I think the nerds have become the bullies. <laughs> it's perfect. It's amazing. But yeah, I think we are going to end here. So thank you everyone so much for listening. And thank you, Ben, so much for coming on and talking about Shadowrun. Uh, thank you so much. This was great. <laughs>